It's Frank Dialogue on your radio with me, Uncle Bote, JJ Tabani. We're coming to you live from Alex FM tonight with 15 other radio stations joining in tonight. I'll tell you a little bit about where else we're coming to you from, but uh, you are welcome in this Elections Festival. 29th of May is beckoning. All of us are expected to go and exercise our democratic right to vote a government of our choice, but to who? do we vote for so many many uh, parties on the ballot uh, this time around the ballot uh, or some 54 parties i'm told on the ballot T today the iec is signing all the parties uh, to a code of conduct because indeed the election season is in full swing with all of the parties looking for you and your vote so tonight we give you a chance to talk to three of those political parties, the Inkata Freedom Party, the African National Congress, as well as the Economic Freedom Fighters, representing the, 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 the EFF, is the, the CIC, Julius Malema at 9 p.m. You stay tuned until that time. It's going to be a one-hour conversation with him. Before that, Gwera Mantashe, the chairperson of the ANC, talks to us at 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And, uh, of course, uh, just now, we're going to be talking to the leader of the Inkata Freedom Party, Ntate Labisa, who's my first guest tonight. Stand by for that conversation. <laughs> Coming uh, uh, listeners from various radio stations tonight, uh, Ho Alex FM hosting us, of course, uh, for this important conversation. But joining us live, Equazy FM uh, listeners, Social FM uh, listeners from Highway Radio, CD Bang FM, uh, Mezi Maholo FM, 744 FM, Cosmos FM, uh, uh, Mums FM as well as uh, Umgu Youth Radio. Lots and lots of you. There's a national imbizo here tonight, an election festival. What can these political parties do for you? The leaders are going to be telling us. We're starting with Ndate Sabisa. Good evening to you, Ndate Sabisa, and uh, welcome to Frank Dialogue on your radio tonight. Good evening, JJ, as well as the listeners from the various radio stations whom we are engaged with this evening i really appreciate your time that this avisa always uh, responding well to my invitations to talk to us i really appreciate that and i hope that when you become president you will still uh, do the same eh? because a president cannot sit with us these days now we will always prioritize <laughs> whenever we have to engage with the public it will always come as a courage matter no oh, wonderful Let's start, let's start off with, I mean, the, the, the uh, KZN has been in the news, Ndate Tlabisa, uh, just recently, we'll come and talk to about your manifesto just now, but, you know, shootings, and, uh, you know, KZN looking like a killing field, there are a lot of people wondering, if IFP comes to power, would that become better or would it become worse? 
as a killing field and how will you tackle this whole issue of KZN's reputation truly as a killing field understanding that you are not only based in KZN but you are headquartered there and surely this must worry you that you, 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 you a province so dear to you is always in the news about killings if it's not political killings it's police shooting down criminals it's just like an unsafe place to be how will the IFP change this Dadeh Labisa? Um, JJ and all the listeners, if you are referring to the incident that happened, the latest the one for yesterday, crime remains a big problem in South Africa. Whenever police act, sometimes people will view the act as brutal, but the fact of the matter crime must be uprooted. The IFP will concentrate in ensuring that we employ more policemen and women so that we do not allow gangsters to mobilize themselves for over a long period mm. and become known with raping people, terrorizing people, because the yesterday's Incident is mm. the result of a long going problem of gangsters known in the area mm. and, and terrorizing community. Exactly. And really, it's unfortunate when people had to die, but yeah. a line had to be drawn for the sake the of sand, the yeah. community, especially if they retaliate yeah. against the police. So, in the IFP the government, arrested. police will be will be expected to act swiftly against criminals. I mean, uh, there are a lot of people who are making a conversation out of this saying, you know, were the police too hard, etc. Of course, they want IAP to investigate, etc. Uh, you, you wouldn't say this is a country which is under siege with about 80 murders a day or so. Uh, and, 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 and so you would expect that there would be unanimity in saying that the police had to act the way they did. Especially against gangsters, really, mm. there is no way we we can tolerate the community to be to, to be terrorized by people who behave mercilessly against them, and with the IFP will be constant in dealing with crime until we reach a zero rate a zero rate level yeah. where there will be no people known that in a particular area is a no go area yeah. for women. Because criminals, they just do whatever they like. Is there something specific you can tell me, you know, that will make you not sound like every other political party on the issue of crime? In other words, you know, some big idea of saying we will implement this idea to lower levels of crime. Because all the political parties say, yeah, we'll be tough, we're going to do this and that. But, you know, we're we are struggling to find something unique that political parties are saying that would say to me, I would choose the IFP instead of the ANC on the issue of fighting crime. Give me something to work with here. JJ, like the ruling party, mm. whatever they can say, it will be an empty promise because <laughs> they have had time to do that. People yeah. must wait for your moment and confirm what you have promised, whether you are failing to keep or you are just making empty promise. Yeah. The IFP do not make the promise it cannot keep. Yeah. The issue of crime, it, it's, a, it's a very critical issue in the country. Mm. Even the economy is affected. No investors or business people will want to invest their money in a, in a, in a crime zone. That is why, therefore, we put it amongst top priorities and we will introduce swift measures, employ more, build more police station mm -hmm. where there is no sufficient money to build more police station, provide mobile station mm -hmm. in the crime zones, which you know, because whenever the minister gives statistics on crime, there are areas which are known as crime zones mm -hmm. and you should deploy sufficient manpower with more resources and have a short turnaround 
to deal with crime once and for all. Yeah. So basically nothing new as such. You're just saying more police stations, more police, more boots on the ground. It's not like there's a magic bullet. You know, I was looking for something, you know, unique and that stands out, man. You say, yeah, you see, if they implement this, I think criminals will, will make a run for it. For example, would you introduce the death penalty? A lot of experts saying, well, if you, if you introduce a death penalty, criminals don't care. They are, because they don't have a vision, they are not. They don't have foresight. Uh, would you introduce a death penalty? Something scary, man. That would just make the criminals be afraid and not be able just to shoot JJ, anybody like as wanton as they do now. JJ, in our manifesto, we pledge that we will hold a referendum yeah. so that people can talk mm. because. The death penalty is outlawed through the Constitution. Absolutely. But if you give the people of South Africa an opportunity to express their view, wherever I go, women yeah. across political parties, they say they want death penalty. Mm. Mm. Confirm that through the referendum. Mm. And if the majority of people mm. say they want it back as a major deterrent against merciless killers, we will definitely go that road because democracy must be the will of people, especially yeah. when you will deal with a matter that is seriously affecting the community. So, uh, in summary, you are calling for a death penalty yourselves as the IFP. You are just saying, let the people confirm it through a referendum so that it doesn't become your decision alone. Definitely. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Tell me, I mean, uh, it's very interesting because now if you, uh, and, and you, you must really clarify me here, your fraternization with the DA, or what I can call in Africans, two or nothering, with the DA worries some people because they are saying, is my vote for the IFP a vote for the DA? And if that's not the case, what is this moonshot or multi-party charter all about? How do you come to a, a, a common place with a, 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 a liberal arrangement by the DA, if you take example of this same thing you've just talked about of death penalty, I think you're going to part ways with somebody like the DA on that issue. How do you reconcile your own ideological approaches, the IFP, with an ideological approach of a party like the DA that is against transformation or reluctant on transformation and simply is seen as representing white interests. Please clarify us um, so we know as we vote for you that our vote on end up with a DA. JJ and mm. the listeners, the IFP is a complete different political party from the Democratic Alliance like all other parties mm. in South Africa. Yes. But there is one thing that is common amongst political parties. Mm. To work in a coalition government is not something new. Let me tell you, JJ, in 1994 to 2004, the IFP was in a government of national unity with the African National Congress mm. and the National Party. Yes. The party that was the custodian of apartheid. Mm. This time around, from 2021, in Wazulatal, we are in a coalition government in 13 municipalities, mm. which are led by IFP, together with the Democrat Democratic Alliance, Freedom Front Plus, One Action SA in one municipality, and the ACDP. Mm. These political parties we differ on many issues, but we find a common ground where there is no majority party to lead the government we found a common ground upon which we agreed to accelerate service delivery to our people yeah. i do agree there are things we will not see eye to eye with the parties in the multi-party charter yes but over a period of 12 months now we are in a constant engagement with yeah. the intention of finding a common ground beyond our differences. Yeah. We do not want to have a situation, JJ, like Eguruleni. Today, mm. we are sitting with Eguruleni without a mayor mm. in a mm. coalition mm. between the parties you know. Yeah. COJ yeah. is a disaster. 
and people should not be subjected in a government like COJ for yeah. the next uh, three years up to 2026. And nationally, you only have 14 days to form a new government. There is one thing we must agree upon. The ruling party has failed our country. Corruption, unemployment, crime, yeah. low shading, things are upside down. People want change. And we are preparing for that change. That is why we are engaged in this discussion. Yeah. And we will not forget what our people want to see in a new government. And we will not be whole held down by any political party that does not want yeah. change. But fortunately, all the parties in the multi-party charter will agree. All right. Change must come now. All right, Bob Slavisa. I want us to, to, to zone in a little bit on this. Right. And I, I'm glad that you mentioned the issue of government of national unity. And because in my view, you know, I've, I think that um, uh, what may save this country is if we looked into the IFP, the ANC, the EFF, the DA, found good people and said to these people, won't you rescue us through that kind of vehicle of, of unity, right? Now, what, what fascinated me, uh, you know, even as somebody who analyzes politics, was that the DA's approach to starting what at that time called the moonshot, which evolved into the multi-party charter, was to exclude the third biggest political party and said, we are not going to work with the EFF. Can everybody else come this side? Now, if you look at the current polls, and uh, whether you believe them or not, right, they, they tend to be a broad estimation of what's going to happen. Right? You may find that uh, as a multi charter uh, outside the PA and the EFF, you are not going to get to the 51. How did you get yourselves around the whole issue of excluding a big player like that while at the same time having the idea uh, of a, a national unity type of a multi-charter arrangement? Or am I right to believe that the door is still open for somebody like the EFF who are, are making strides uh, and are, as we speak, the third biggest political party in our landscape? Uh, can you clarify me there? Because I just found it uh, uh, that if you want the NC to be out, as you have just said to them, they have failed their people, etc. Are you not weakening that project by excluding already two big players like the PA, like the EFF, from your p multi party? Uh, JJ mm. and the listeners, there is 14 million people who are mm. registered in South Africa who are not participating in the voting mm. process. If mm. we can mobilize those 14 million people, we will gladly and easily remove the government that has failed us. And the multi-party charter can gladly score more than 50% plus one and above. Because if you look at the statistics, yeah. the ruling party in 2019 got 10 million votes. Yes. In 2021, they got 5 million votes. <clears throat> Therefore, it tells you if you can concentrate on the 14 million yeah. that is already in the voters' role, you can tip the scale without relying on any political party. Yeah. Which you may not have a common approach on yes. issues. But are you, are you agree no, let me interrupt you there. Are you agreeing, though, therefore, that uh, it's not a bad thing to have excluded the EFF at, you know, up, up in issue at the beginning, instead of saying, let's engage and make sure that we can have a, a, a broad coalition that would uh, deliver a new government? Because what has happened is that it's a, pot it's a potential of making the ANC end up in power by default because you've got a fractured opposition about Sabisa. Please address that part for me. But look at what works, uh, JJ, mm. compared to what does not work. I'm mm. talking about every ruling. Mm. You are my witness. <laughs> it's a complete failure. And COJ, it's a complete failure. Mm. Why, why do you carry on exploring something that demonstrated it doesn't work? Why don't you explore and put your energy mm. in something that has a capacity and a potential to work for you, even when it comes to economic policy? Because there is a key thing that must bind you together. If you are divergent, like not like East and West, when it comes to the mm. economic policy, any coalition of those political parties will not work. 
Yeah. But the truth is, the people of South Africa, if we can appeal and through the media that this election is like 1994, yeah. let everybody go to the voting station and exercise his or her vote and <clears throat> protest with his or her vote because people want change. Yeah. And they know whom they not want to continue governing our country. And if we can concentrate in that bigger portion of 40 million, yeah. we won't stress ourselves that try to combine political parties that, 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 that don't work. That yeah. work. I, I, are you gi have you given up on, on a possible friendship with the EFF? Let's say if you end up being the two biggest parties in KZN, uh, I can see that you all of you are competing about how to fill Mo Moses Mabida. All three parties have filled Moses Mabida, so anything is possible uh, in terms of neck to neck. No, have you given up on the EFF? You had some some uh, you know nasty things to say about them recently, in the Tlavisa. I don't know, JJ, the IFP and the EFF mm. have a record. We have worked together. Mm. We remained our doors open. Yeah. And this is known between IFP and EFF. Yeah. And we have been in Germany, JJ, where we saw a different combination of political parties at the provincial, national, and local government. So now, if you talk between IFP alone, not in the charter, doors are open with the EFF and where we will be from, we will part ways as we did last year. All right. Now, let's talk about uh, 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 you know, your footprint as IFP. Can you just talk to me frankly? Is IFP really depending on some kind of a Zulu nationalism to survive or are you a party for all across the nine provinces, across the 12 languages, across the multiple cultures of South Africa? Just just be frank with me about it. I am frank. What I'm going to tell you, JJ, the ISP is a party for all people of South Africa. Mm. Next week, from Monday up to Sunday the 14th, mm. With my NEC, the National Executive Committee, we will be in Johannesburg preparing for the provincial launch of our manifesto mm. in Chimistin mm. here in the Gauteng exam in the Gauteng. Yes. The following week, we'll be going to the Pom Pom, and on the 1st of May, on the Workers' Day, we'll be launching our manifesto in Pumalanga, and thereafter proceed to Free State. The IFP believes that the, our party is a home for all people of South Africa. The propaganda and yeah. violence played a major role to want to reduce us into being a regional party. Yeah. And we have demonstrated over years yeah. that you cannot rob us the place in the national political arena and push us into a provincial level because yeah. we are beyond that. That is why, since 1994, the IFP is a major player in the national parliament in Cape Town, yeah. as we also have a footprint in Gauteng. You are my witness, uh, yeah. JJ. In a number of municipalities, go to Ebonomeni, go to COJ, go to Soane, you will find the IFP representatives, yeah. go to the legislature of Gauteng, we have a representative, yeah. and we will be doing... How's your, how's your footprint in the Northern Cape and Eastern Cape and the Western Cape? What would you say there, one out of ten, in terms of existence? I mean, I haven't heard of an IFP in, in, in Umtata. JJ... Mm. You must go and, and visit um, Eastern Cape yeah. and walk on foot, not fly by aeroplane. <laughs> you will meet people who are IFP <laughs> members. I must agree. Yeah. In the in the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, and Northern Cape, those three provinces. Yeah. That is where we are not <clears throat> strong. You are not too ground. strong. Yeah. But but, but if I walk on foot, I will meet I am a boot of IFP. No, 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 JJ, let me just share this point before I, I leave. Before 1994, mm. while I was still at the University of Zululand, mm. I physically campaigned for the IFP in Northern Cape. Wow. I took a train to go there. 
if something as old as, as, beyond, as prior 1994, but the truth, we are not as strong as you compare in Gauteng, yeah. Free State, Limpopo, Northwest, as well as Bumalanga. Uh, not mentioning okay. Gwanzu Natal, which is our, our strong base. We're talking to Ndate Sabisa, who is the president of the IFP. You can give us a ring on 011-440-1322. Uh, Six, if you want to talk to him uh, as we engage in some of the plans that the IFP has. Would you say, though, that the IFP prides itself with, you know, uh, uh, sort of preserving the, the, the legacy of the Zulu nation? I mean, your your predecessor uh, was the prime minister of the Zulu nation for decades. In fact, nobody knew how a prime minister should be other than him, at least uh, those of us who are 50 years old. Well, we, we, are, we are not shy mm. that we believe in Africanism. Mm. The Zulu culture is part of Africanism, mm. and the Kosa culture, the Soto culture, all cultures of African yes. people, we take pride in them mm. because we are Africans in Africa, but we do not also exclude the cultures of other population group like the Indian community mm. and any other community with a strong culture, the African-speaking people, we believe that in diversity we form one nation and no one should be blamed to promote a culture of a particular population group in South Africa as long as you do not discriminate against others and you do not make one population group superior to others. If you believe in equality in a diverse society yes. is what we believe because yeah. we are not one race we are a one human race i, I like what diverse. i like what you are saying you must be totally disgusted then by the conduct of the chairperson of the anc at the recent uh, 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 celebration there uh, 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 where he grabbed the mic from the, the prime minister of the zulu nation in full glare of international media well, that was very unfortunate, uh, JJ. I'm sure even the ANC, um, when they have closed the doors, they are able to talk to each other. <laughs> that some yeah. kind of behavior was unfortunate and unacceptable, and we do not wish to see it happening again because it was like something that disgraced to have happened when the whole uh, nation, even international people, we're watching the celebration of the 110th year of King Dinosaur. All right. Call us on 11 uh, if you want to have a conversation with Bab Labisa, the president of the IFP. That Labisa. Uh, lots of parties making promises about jobs. A lot of people may be listening to our conversation so far saying, what has this got to do with me? I'm sitting without a job. I've got a degree from a university. No use of it because nobody is hiring me. And we've got, to, we've got you know, almost half of our young people without jobs. If the A IFP comes to power, what should they expect? What promise are you making? What target of job creation are you putting on the table as IFP? Talk to me. The IFP, when it comes to job creation, firstly, we will put South Africans first. We will propose and introduce the 80 is to 20 ratio. Every industry or sector where people work, we must have 80% being the people of South Africa and only allow 20% for specialized skills. Where we do not need specialized skills, it must be the people of South Africa. We are not xenophobic, but we are not afraid to say South Africa belongs to the people of South Africa. The foreign yeah. nationals with no specialized skills should be assisted to go back to their respective countries. Yeah. We will ensure that all graduates yeah. who are sitting at home under the current government, we will provide a stipend for a period of 12 months when we um you provide a stipend for 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 unemployed people 
unemployed graduates. Uh, unemployed graduates. There are thousands of them, eh? if not millions at the no, moment. There is a lot of money. There is a lot more of money, uh, JJ. Mm. Can I share with you? Yeah. Our cabinet is bloated. Mm. We will need to cut down the cabinet of our country. And some departments do not deserve to have deputy ministers. Mm. Yes, I know there are some departments where you must have a deputy minister because of the yes. size yes. of the department, but not all of them. We will save all that money mm. that is unnecessarily used under a bloated cabinet. Mm. Corruption. Corruption is costing South Africa billions of dollars, if you want to call it in terms of dollars. That money will have to be prudently used. The money that belongs to the government will be given a watchful eye as to where the resources go. A lot of money go to wrong people instead of investing that money by creating job opportunities, fighting crime, to create a conducive environment for foreign investors to come and invest. Because you must create an environment which attracts... But what is your target? What is your target? I can hear all the stories, but what is your target? How many jobs are you promising? Get people of South Africa to wake up to work. It is possible because other countries in the world are able to invite foreign people to come and provide labor because everybody is working in that in those particular countries. The ISP yeah. target yes. make South Africa work. Every individual must have... No, a target, I mean the number. The, the ANC is promising 2.5 million job opportunities. And I, and I will talk no, to the no, chairperson no, of the ANC. He wants to we, understand we, what we is have. the difference between job opportunities and the actual jobs. What are you promising? How many jobs, if an AFP government comes to power, are you promising to create in the data JJ, mm. we are sitting at 41% unemployed people yes. in South Africa. Mm. Our target is to turn things around and do what other countries are able to do, provide jobs for everybody in South Africa. Everybody? It is possible. Other countries, <laughs> they are able to provide jobs for every citizen oh, yeah. and even invite yeah. people from other countries to come and provide labor in their particular countries. Yeah. And that is our basic and a main target that yeah that must be the biggest target because others are saying you know da is saying six million boss is saying two million i you know eff is saying nine million you are saying everybody that means all people without their job in an ifp government you'll make sure they've got jobs that sounds unrealistic uh, unless you are, you are you are refusing to give us a target against which we can hold you accountable yeah, JJ, mm. you, you may say it is unrealistic. Mm. You know myself, my yourself, my brother. Mm. Countries in the world, there are countries where everybody goes to work every morning because mm. job is available. Mm. A determined government in South Africa can do that. We can play around with figures six million, nine million, twelve million, fifteen million, but. Every South African who wants to go to work, we must create an opportunity for such. With determination, yeah. that is not a dream impossible to achieve. Yeah. Uh, w w one of your, your counterparts uh, in the Patriot Alliance want to uh, 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 deport, uh, must deport people who are in legally in South Africa. Will you join a call like that? Uh, uh, you've just talked now about making South Africans come first in as far as jobs are concerned. They are saying, they are on the other extreme, saying, no, must deport illegal people out. And uh, in a sense, blaming the illegal immigrants, even immigrants generally, about the poor state of of of, of uh, employment in, in the country. Well, what's, your, what's your own sense there? Because I think that the, the, after your, your whole spill about African and Ubuntu and what have you, uh, I, I don't expect that you then say you, are, you want to mass deport? JJ, that is why the IFP accommodates 80 is to 20. We believe South Africa has a responsibility for people who are seeking political refuge. Those people should be allowed to be in South Africa. People coming for studies, 
as students, they should be allowed and they can work while they are doing their studies in South Africa. But it cannot be that in the restaurants, in the construction industry, Uber driving, construction sector, yeah. because where you do not require a specialized skill, yeah. you have South Africans who want a job, and the employers employ foreign nationals because one, they pay them as a cheap labor, and they know they cannot complain because some of them do not have the IDs, and some of them they know they are here illegally. The IFP is against forceful removal of the foreign nationals to their respective countries, but an, a, a practice that is done by all African countries. If you go to Mozambique, they know who you are, how long are you going to be in Mozambique, and what have you come to Mozambique for? While we believe in Ubuntu and African humanism, but that should not be at the expense of the people of South Africa is a principle that is practiced mm. by all other countries in Africa. People of that country should come as a top priority in creating job opportunities for them. Yeah. While but you don't agree with mass deportation? Violence. No, the a, a xenophobic uh, behavior is not something that we support as IFP. <laughs> all right. Okay, I want to talk about uh, the economy. I'm going to take a short break. And then after that break, we're going to talk a little more about the economy. There's a, there's a whole uh, debate, especially within some of your partners in the Moonshot or the multi-party charter, about black economic empowerment. I want to talk a little bit about that after the break as we delve more into the economic policies of the IFP. We're talking to Ntate Babsabisa. It's frank dialogue on your radio with me on Kopoze, JJ Tawan. It's an election festival tonight. And uh, our current guest, Bab Sabisa, IFP president. And then next guest, Kwere Mantashe, the chairperson of the ANC. And our last guest tonight, I, I, EFF CIC, Julius Malema, taking us all the way to 10 o'clock. Stay tuned. Frank Dialogue on your radio with Dr. JJ Tabani. Let's talk frankly. di puo pelas na airtime sa gago ke gwa di mamotse otlhe ke ka mo ba mmitsang nka di meng ke o hatla nka di meng le ba gisa ni ba setse ba la pile go nna o pela ba feletsa airtime maki nka di meng ke letse metso tsona fela tlhe e e di puo ba thong ga re yo a go le ke MTN extra time o ska stressa di puo ka MTN extra time o ka phone mme wa duela morago bona airtime data kgotsa di voice bundle go mpeno to beta star 136 star 2 hash go bona extra time kgotsa download the MTN app ya no go nna le dipelo re dira eng go mpeno MTN MacArthur Funeral Services is here to support you during the time of need and provide a dignified funeral for your loved ones with only 150 rand once off joining fee and a 200 rand monthly subscription we cover ages between 0 to 75 years societies and stockfill groups free transportation for 100 kilometers and our waiting period is six months we are located at 113 second street weinberg next to cecil garage for more information contact 011-440-0029 or you can call the number 083-639-9029 Legata Funeral Services. We walk the course with you. Because of Christ, I can find hope, peace, and joy. Because of Christ, I can live again. Because of Christ, I can receive personal guidance. Because of Christ, I can do all things. You are invited to join us for a worldwide worship service. Come watch inspiring messages and music. Tune in to General Conference on the 7th of April at 6 p.m. Frank Dialogue on your radio with Dr. J.J. Tabani. Let's talk frankly. It's Frank Dialogue on your radio with Leon Kopotse, J.J. Tabani. We are in, uh, coming to you live from Alex FM and 15 other radio stations around the country uh, having a national imbizo uh, election festival as we interrogate some of the policies of uh, political parties that are going to be asking for your vote 
on May the 29th. We're talking to Bob Velinkosi, Sabisa, the IFP president. At 8 o'clock, stay tuned for Gwede Mantashe, the chairperson of the ANC. And 9 o'clock, stay tuned for uh, uh, CIC of the EFF. Julia Silo Malima. And that is Tabisa. Let's talk about BEE. A lot of uh, 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 parties uh, who you uh, uh, associate with uh, in the multi party chat have said scrap the thing, take it out, do something else because it has only benefited a few. Your view? Parties in the multi party charter mm. do not agree on anything. Mm. The ISP believes in the BEE and the right decision that was made, mm. the only thing, mm. it did not achieve the desired goal. It benefited mm. a few connected relatives and it, it became a front of other people other than achieving the desired goal. So the yeah. IP said. Yeah. So, so you, won't, you won't change BEE law as it is now. You will only implement it better. We will implement it better because we how how are you going to implement it better? How? No, no, no. You see, you you will need to look at what are the loopholes that made the current EEE mm. not achieve the desired goals yeah. and become something for friends, relatives of the leaders of the government of today. Yeah. You must create balances that how the ordinary black people who are not connected to anyone benefits through the BEE. How do you channel? No. How do you en evaluate and follow up every support that has been made available that no. is it really benefiting the people who were previously disadvantaged or yeah. it went to the wrong day. Yeah, let's interrogate so, that a little bit because the president of the country just two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, a whole held a big Co conference in Santen with a thousand uh, what so-called black industrialists and they showcasing this as a success of BEE and they're saying that it's all a myth that you know uh, people uh, did not benefit and so on and they're showcasing this thing that there are a thousand black industrialists um, and, and, and they're talking here about you know how that has has sort of made a big difference particularly in the, the industrialization of the country uh, i mean do, do, do you believe that or, or do you think that that's a small screen it is a small screen like you remember uh, jj mm. the president when he was making the state of the nation mm. he spoke of tinsualo. The tinsualo, yes but in south africa the millions of our youth are sitting at home yeah. Unemployed. You shouldn't pick one thing and a very limited yeah. order to blind us and say this is working, the truth of the matter. Yeah. The P E E goal is it is it has been abused, mm. it did not achieve the desired goal at maximum over a mm. period. And the P E E has been in existence, we should be seeing a um, a great success yeah so are you dismissive of the black industrialization program i mean obviously um the the the, the issues about unemployment poverty and what have you are there but shouldn't we be able to identify that which works even if it's in with a, to a limited extent and say let's tick a box called industrialization maybe that it does it didn't cover too many people but can we dismiss the fact that there are one thousand black industrialists who have been born of the ANC's efforts at BEE, weak as they may have been, Tate Tlabisa. We should have gone more than that number, JJ. Mm. While I acknowledge that number that is too little and insufficient mm. versus the people who should have been yeah. advanced through BEE, if the government was really at work, yeah. ensure that it benefits the intended people. Okay, I want to end our conversation on the issue of corruption. Well, the issue of corruption being a big, big issue throughout 
the last 30 years. In fact, some more than a trillion rand apparently wasted uh, in corruption. The editor general tells us every year how municipalities are wasting money. In fact, most of municipalities not even, uh, you know, coming close to having clean audits. And some of those municipalities are under your watch. Why must I believe that the IFP will be different? I mean, we're hearing scandals from your municipalities on corruption, sex for jobs, you name it. How have you dealt with those kind of niggling things that sort of gives us a sense of discomfort that here we are again, uh, it looks like uh, all of these parties are the same when it comes to corruption, that it's like Bisa. But JJ, mm. if you talk about the audit outcome, mm. you must also give credit to the IFP mm. that in the latest audit outcome, we have municipalities, and we have told the municipalities yes, has maintained a string of clean audits. Yeah. King Pestoa District got a clean audit. Mm. Umlala the municipality got a clean audit. So now, when we say there are challenges, yeah. but where credit is due, must we must give it yeah. to those. The IFP is happy because, you know, out of all the municipalities we govern, we only have one municipality that got disclaimer. Mm. The rest is from <clears throat> the unqualified uh, uh, audit outcome to the top three that got clean audit. Only one yeah. with an adverse finding. And we are working even on that municipality. There are many challenges at JJ which people should not ignore. Yeah. Municip municipalities in deep rural areas have a challenge of retaining skilled and highly qualified people. But we are not making that excuse because yeah. Umlalazi is one of the deep rural municipalities in terms of work, but it managed to go to get clean audit. And a number of them with the unqualified yeah. um, audit outcome, which will say push it further to clean audit. The yeah. IFP, How have you dealt with sc the scandals that? of sex for jobs in these municipalities? You see, JJ, mm. if a person says in this municipality, yeah. if you want to get a job, you must first pass through the <clears throat> sexual intercourse. We are saying, can you please go and open a case with the police yeah. so that we can take an action? Now, if you only read... So I say nobody has op ever opened a case of that nature? No, none of them. None. You none whatsoever. Case, yes. So it's all a big none rumor. Mm. And this thing is in the social media, JJ. Mm. And, you know, people who are peddling this issue in the social media yeah. are our political competitors. Yeah. And even now, I'm saying the ISP is one political party that is not afraid of consequence management. We have recalled mayors, councillors, and speakers from 2021 to date. Not one, but more than one mayor has been recalled because we are not afraid to take an action against any person who do a wrong thing. Yeah. And you cannot respond to the social media yeah. if you appeal that can you please go so in your the knowledge system. there has not been any ifp leader mayor municipal manager caught up in corruption of that nature is is that what you are telling me tonight no 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 in our knowledge there is no one who has been caught up in such a scandal that is why we are saying people who are complaining because they are brave to speak mm. in the social media can you please go and open a case so that we can tackle yeah. the mayor that is being implicated? Yeah. Unless people do so, we remain harmless or yeah. helpless to assist in the, fighting the scourge the, the, of the whole corruption issue. of the crime. Okay, okay, I hear you that. The whole issue of the clean audit sounds nice, but how do you explain the return of money to Treasury? of monies that were supposed to be used for rural roads in the KZN area, etc. I mean, is there something that you have uh, 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 sort of gotten a report on from your own people who are saving in the legislature 
who are serving in the various municipalities because the reports that we're getting about money being returned to the treasury, millions being returned to the treasury and still instead of being used to improve roads in the rural areas of KZN are, are, are shocking. JJ, it is shocking even at the provincial government throughout South Africa where they had to return money back to government let us not limit that only to the IFP, but we also say it is unacceptable when an allocation has been given to you and has been transferred to you timelessly, and we stand against fiscal dumping. There is a fiscal dumping at some times, uh, JJ, when the money is only transferred to municipalities towards the end of the year for them to fail to spend it and only to be recorded back. As I have been a member of the provincial legislature, I was standing against this dumping and standing against any department at the provincial level led by ANC and any municipality led by ISP or any political party to fail to spend money that was yeah. transferred to you previously. And we need to capacitate, as I said in the beginning, um, JJ, yeah. municipalities in the deep rural areas they experience it not only I go to Western to Eastern Cape, a lot of municipalities because of the ruralness nature of the municipalities, the shortage of skilled manpower, sometimes they are unable to execute certain activities timely yeah. should it be on the audit outcome or the capital uh, project a uh, project in terms of awarding if there are people contesting the award, you can't carry on with that project, and it takes a longer time until you are unable to finish the money, because money comes in pensions uh, on the basis of uh, not able to use what we transferred earlier. But the problem of money being returned is not only a problem of rural municipalities at Ebonine as such, which is the only metro in Western Natal, experiences the same, which is not good to happen under any All reality, right. and is a great area that we must improve on. Okay, Ndati, thank you so much for what you have shared with us. Your comment on the the saga that's been gripping the nation over the last three days, uh, the resignation of the Speaker of Parliament and uh, her appearance in court this afternoon? I think one must um, thank the former Speaker and the Sivuwe Mapis and Nabula for being bold to step down and resign as a speaker of the National Assembly mm. in order to concentrate to the allegations she is facing. Unlike many people who are implicated in the Zondo Commission and they are back in the list to continue being paid by the taxpayers' money with a cloud of huge corruption. So as a woman, I want to thank her what she did. Yeah. She retained the dignity of the, of the National Assembly, and we hope justice will be served on her and be proven the allegations, and we want to give our trust to the justice system in dealing with the allegations facing her, but it should not end with her. Yeah. All people with allegations with great gravity in terms of corruption, must be attended as the case has been with the former speaker of the national assembly yeah if you as a member of the ifp would you have fired her over these allegations before she's actually found guilty by the courts you must act once you have sufficient evidence in front of mm. you and i think as the former speaker personally tried to yeah. stop the arrest when that failed she did what was right to resign because for me, yeah. the next thing she, was it, but it seems like she did it because her. she had uh, no choice anymore you know if she did it three weeks ago maybe we would praise her for it <clears throat> jj mm. when you have to dismiss someone you must have sufficient evidence in front of you to me when he wanted to stop the arrest yeah it was an alarm Absolutely. She wants mm. to prevent something. So now, immediately when the court dismissed the application, my next step was to say, you step down. Yeah. And because you have failed to 
prevent the justice to be served. But when she decided to resign, I said, oh, well, good reason. And of course, <laughs> right. she has done what is good for our country. Yeah. I know his political, her political party would not have done anything because there are so many people with serious allegations yeah. of corruption. They are back in the list. All right. Bab Slabisa, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. And I want to wish you and your party well in the next few weeks as we go towards the 29th of May. I appreciate the time you have given us tonight. Just a few seconds, JJ. Thank you very much for the engagement. Yeah. I want to make a clarion call to the people of South Africa. Yes. Especially the 14 million who are not voting yet. They are registered voters. Mm. 2024 elections is like our 1994 election. As we queued in long queues for more than one day, let us do the same. Let us go and protest through the ballot box and put an alternative government that will deal with the challenges we are facing right. as a country. Thank you so much, Ndade Tlabisa. All the best uh, with your election campaign. As was said, Thank that you very much, uh, JJ. Tlabisa, the, the IFP leader, talking to us here on Frank Dialogue on your radio at the top of the hour. Kwere Mantashe, chairperson of the ANC, my guest here tonight as we continue the election festival here on Frank Dialogue on your radio. Stay tuned.
on your radio with me on Kopote JJ Savani. We're coming to you live from Alex FM tonight in the election festival where we're talking to leaders of political parties about what on earth are they promising you ahead of that crucial May 29 elections. Of course, joining us outside or besides Alex FM is Equazi FM, Social FM, Highway Radio FM, Listener Storm, Sidibang FM, uh, Mezimaholo FM, 744 FM, Cosmo FM. Mums FM, Umbu Youth Radio, it's a national impiso. And of course, my guest tonight, Kwere Mantashe, the chairperson of the African National Congress, also Minister of Minerals and Energy. Resources, chairperson of the ANC, good welcome. Ev good evening, Professor Taban. I appreciate your time tonight. It's been a while. How oh, is it? Yeah, we must tell people that A is you've. you've You've refused to come and talk to me for a while until I promise to behave. Yes. <laughs> uh, behaving is very important because when you behave, you yeah. extract value optimally. More from the guest, you, you know. When you don't behave, you, 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 you suppress yeah. ideas. Yeah. We'll talk. I, th I think uh, uh, the, 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 question, the bigger question is whether you think, as chairperson now of the ANC, right at the top of this movement, right, uh, that was founded in 1912, that you think the NC behaved in a manner, right, that is congruent with its mission. Just give me a sense, you know, as, as you analyze it, to say, we think that the NC, if you, if you are a lecturer, right, uh, uh, and, and, and you are to mark the ANC out of 100 tonight, what would you honestly give it? Now, let me start it this way. Yeah. You know, the NC <coughs> is the only party Mm. That goes out there to people and say, listen, mm. we've worked, these are the things we've done, these yes. are the achievements, yeah. these are the, this is the progress we've made. Yes. And it says, we've also committed mistakes, these are the mistakes, mm. uh, and we, are, we understand them, we are learning on duty, yeah. we are going to correct them, this is what we plan to do. Yes. That is the, that is the nature of the beast you are dealing with. Mm. That you you quantify progress because sometimes there is temptation to say nothing is happening yes and that is totally not true but also there's another temptation on the other extreme that says all is rosy everybody said no, no. in Tualo, etc i, 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 I eh? haven't met an ANC person who yeah. said all is rosy i haven't met that person but they may imply yes. it the, no i haven't met that person let me give you an example yes so that you, you understand what i mean mm. then they will say uh, we have low shedding. Yeah. Okay. I want to start there. Yeah. But you will say, we can't start there. Let's start from the fact that in 1994, only white South Africans and had, very had few access Africans to electricity. had access to electricity. Yeah. It was 34%. It will say, today 93% of our South Africans are having access to electricity. That yeah. is progress. And then it says, we lag behind in generating sufficient capacity of generation. Yes. And more, one of the technical mistakes that we have committed, yeah. we, we own up to it. There was this hope that coal is coming to an end and therefore they didn't make coal generating power station yeah. work optimally. Yeah. Now, what uh, Sputler Ram Cooper has done, has done one thing. He focused on the energy availability factor of coal generating power station. Yeah. He's trying to resolve load shedding. I don't say it is. Uh, he has resolved it because yeah. we haven't had it for a week. I want to come to that. It's good yes. that you started with electricity. Yes. But before we get to that, I want to deal with a bigger political question. Yes. It's, it's good that I'm talking to you tonight because you are, you are one of the uh, uh, secretary generals of the ANC who yes. came up with yes. what was called a diagnostic report. Yes. It was a vicious report. But you know what was interesting about it? Mm -hmm. It was almost a duplicate of the report given by Kalima Motlanti in 2007. No, Even it was not. 10, no, no, almost, I said almost. Because the, the, the factionalism, buying of votes, all of those things were, 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 were still repeating themselves after 10 years, which means, listen to my question, okay. which means that there seems to be a, an, an ability, even almost an excellence of analysis of what is wrong and not an equal excellence to, to, to push back on those things that you have identified as things that are going wrong, as in your diagnostic report. Your comment on that? You see, you see JJ, I, I always tell people mm. that, you know, 
who are all products of Bando education. I'm one of them. Mm. And the, 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 the problem of Bando education is that it never prepared us to lead. Mm. It prepared us to be servants. Yes. So we had to lead and learn on job. Mm. Basically, all the skills that we are acquiring in leadership yeah. are equal to recognition of prior learning. Mm. Okay. So you will uh, do a diagnosis because analysis is a function of your capacity to analyze. Yes. Execution requires more focused uh, interaction with the problem yeah. and address it. You will address others, others will fall through, others will fear the diagnostic report, want to run for cover yeah. when they see it. Because and refused even refused to adopt it. Yes, but it was adopted ultimately. Yes, ultimately. And the the the, the, the issue there is that uh, when it happens, you you do take it as progress being made. Yeah. When it is not executed fully, you know that there are shortcomings. Yeah. And we own up to that. Yeah. That is the unique character of the NC, owning up to uh, setbacks. Yeah. But but. Uh, if you had to then look back, because now it's five years ago yes. now when that diagnostic report yes. was given, yes. right? Would you say that some of the perennial problems of vote buying, corruption, okay. and so on have been dealt with, right? Uh, in a sense, in, in a more energetic way before the diagnostic report. Right? Would you say that as a chairperson, you can just do give it to me straight? Do, do you ever read the Bible? Yeah, regularly, okay. regularly, you, yeah. Now, I want you, when you leave the studio today, yeah. read Proverbs 28. Okay. The first five verses. Mm. That's enough. It is going to tell you about the renewal. Yes. That those who are evil will run out of the ANC without being pursued. Okay. And, <laughs> you see, and, 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 and that is not theoretical. Yeah. People get into there it is becoming too hot because yeah. we are implementing many of the resolution we've taken and people run for cover mm. now now i can i can give you another example of most good people get into the nc and many of the people you go to social media they yeah. will all tell you that ramaphosa must be a police must be a magistrate must be a judge must be a prosecutor mm. What they don't apply their mind to is a, a, a government that is strengthening institutions. Yes. And institutions are beginning to have teeth, and they are actually doing what they should do. People get arrested, people get prosecuted, because institutions are alive. And what the government will focus on is on strengthening and resources yes. those institutions. I think that box we can tick, right? But... I'm, I'm, uh, what I'm looking Tell for you from that. you is assessment of, of the extent to which all of those things are now coming to bear, right? I mean, we, we're talking about an NPA that was that, that promised us seven and eight, five years ago. Mm. There's not been a big fish. Let's let's be honest. There's not no. been a big fish that, that in is, prison that is, that in is five where, years. Mama, that is where you all commit mistakes. Okay, what is the mistake? You then? are actually nullifying the principle that people are equal before the law. Okay, you're so not that. because we you want the big fish. You are looking for big fishes. Yeah, all over. why not? Why can't we look no. for a big fish? I mean, even in, no. cri in criminal no. law, you know, no. uh, in terms of a syndicate, you need to look at the the heart of the matter. Who is sending no. you to kill people? Uh, no, not as, not a inkavi. Everybody. Yeah. Is equal before the law. Yeah. If you pull a trigger and you shoot JJ, mm. you must be arrested. Yes. Then after arresting you will interrogate you to say who's the big who, who sent you who held you yeah and then when you catch that person it's not because he is not arrested because he's a big fish yeah he's arrested because he's committed crime yeah you, you see you, you know um <laughs> <laughs> you know this week yeah, yeah. we've been saved by sisnos view how how did she save us he saved us <laughs> because sisnos we get a allegation that listen I, a person who is guilty, yeah, go to the NPA and say, uh, I've committed this crime, yeah, I gave no a, a, a kickback, yes, and then so forth, so forth. Then no will get called in in terms of section 204, and yeah. come and answer for those questions, yeah. And opposition parties excited with that, yeah, 
go and submit something called a vote of no, no confidence. confidence. Yes, that is excitement, and I'm saying he excite. He actually saved us from that exercise, which was a fruitless exercise of a vote of no confidence. Because Be because you're going to defend her. Because we are not convinced that when a person says I'm cooperating. Uh, I will do everything that must. I, that you must, I must punish do. your feather. Yeah, and then you say you have a, vo in a vote of no confidence. Yeah. It's not a vote of no confidence. The person herself go and ask to say, "Release me! I don't want to." But be she part. didn't want to be arrested. I mean, why are you are you sidestepping that one? No. She, she wanted to go to court no. to say, "Don't no. arrest me like no. this. No. Arrest me on this okay. day." I mean, surely that can't be right. Can I tell you, JJ? Yeah. Can I tell you? One of the things that I have a, a lot of experience on. Yeah. When people can formulate an allegation on you yeah. and sustain it and your reputation gets dragged into the mud, mm. when you are in that situation, my option is that allow a person to, to exercise yeah. and exercise in any way possible. Right, in any way possible because it is We know that better isn't it? I mean Zuma has been yeah. caught for twenty years. Yes. yes. So 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 I don't want to pretend as if yeah. there's something wrong when a person is fed the space. Let me give you an example. Yeah. Many of, of these opposition parties yeah. will talk Zonda Commission. Yeah. And list me. I mean the top 10 of the Action SA. Yeah. Top 10. The interesting in the, in, in the Action Because they want you to be arrested. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is interesting in the, in the Action SA? They only stand black faces who must be arrested. And yeah. they are silent on Vuesta. Yeah. Who fed all of them and the DA. Yeah. It's not but Juste was not in the state capture report. They were, uh, no, I suppose no, they were talking about them. Yeah. I'll come to you. Yeah. They don't talk in that top list of people. That they don't talk about that because yeah. they are beneficiaries. Yeah. And uh, somebody asked a very important question. When is his funeral? Because nobody talks about it. Nobody comes outside of his, of his house. Oh, yeah. But now, quite a uh, Zondo Commission, you are, you are, you are fingered. They yeah. say so. Yeah. You go to that report because you, you like reading. You read it. Yeah. That report says, Terms of Ruin don't cover this case. Really. Yeah. That report says, I've, but I tested this and I can't find any prima facie evidence yeah. of corruption or attemptation to, 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 to actually... But it must be further investigated. Yeah. Then it says, because I can't find anything, somebody else may find something wrong. It must be further investigated. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, today, uh, last week I was in church. <laughs> you see, I'm caught in church today. I was in hey, church. I'm in trouble. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was in church. Th th that report, when it talks about me, it's like Pontius Pilate. I find this man not guilty, but crucify him. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. That's it. So, when... All right, I don't want to ask to, to, to be consumed with that one, but I, I've always wanted to ask you this question, because yes. I did read your papers yes. where you are taking the thing to review. Yes. And the only thing that stood out for me, which I really wanted to clarify and be frank with me tonight, yes. is that... You seem to be saying you didn't have the power to influence anybody. I mean, you're Secretary General for 10 years. No. How can that be true? It's, it is true. Yeah. Because I'm in government now for five, for six years. Yeah. I'm in government for six years. I don't have a person from Lutula who works. Calling you and who, telling you what to do. Go to Demari and say, for a board of this, appoint so and so for this, this. Yeah. Nobody does that. I never did that when I was in the Tule House, yeah. uh, and I was never in the Deployment Committee for your information. Yeah. Never in my life. Uh, as, as General Secretary, in the 10 years, you have you've never influenced any deployment at all. No. Is that what you are telling me here tonight? Deployment go to the yeah. uh, to Deployment Committee. Yes. It is recommended. It is discussed in the NEC. Yes. Yes, it's fine. Yeah, but you have never influenced Israel. I'm dealing with I the issue about... Took you as a secretary no, general, who's the most powerful person for 10 years in the ANC, and you never influenced even the appointment of a secretary I anywhere in I government. I never took a person yeah. saying, please put this person on the list. Never. I never did that. I, I'm not finding that too believable. In that no, you can dashing. believe it or not believe it. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you know, JJ, mm. when I say I'm in government for six years, yeah. I have not stolen a cent. Uh, the money of the state, not yeah. a cent of the state. Yes. I've not stolen money. Yeah. People don't believe it because they, they, think that, <laughs> they think that it's fashionable to steal state money. And they yeah. say, I have not stolen it. Yeah. I will go and leave. You will put SIU to investigate it. Yes. They will not find a cent stolen by Guede yeah. in the state. Uh, I, uh, I want to, to look into the operation of yeah. the various SOEs. Yes. I have 13 in my, in my portfolio. Yeah. All of them. All of them. 
improved dramatically. Of the 13, six are having clean audits. Mm. Five are having unqualified. Yeah. One has moved from disclaimer to qualified. There is one disclaimer, and we're focusing on that. Yeah. You know why is that the case? It's not because there is a very effective minister. It's because when I walked in there, yeah. I emphasized the importance of improving and implementing governance. Because when you improve, you, you allow governance. Yeah. It is actually reducing both operational and financial risk. And so you're saying you are pushing back against state capture because yes. the, 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 the state capture report tells us the opposite of what you are telling yes. me about the how, yes. under your watch, yes. right, over the last 20, yes. 15 years, yes. SOEs were, were given bad chairpersons, yes. bad executives, yes. bad, uh, 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 you know, cadres who, who disappointed us there and make sure that those institutions like NPA, ESCOM, etc. are hollowed out. So you are saying that's changing. Yes. It is changing. Yeah. You can look at SAF, you can look at uh, Petro SA, which was... I see you have just appointed a board for them recently. Yes. Yeah. You can, you can look at them. Uh, that, was, that was an example of asset stripping. Yeah. As a strip to nothing. We are yeah. building it from scratch and we are not doing it by a minister. It is done yeah. by a board and executive. Yeah. But, in, but bottom line, you are saying under your watch, you had, you had no part really yes. in state capture no. i mean if i'm to no. summarize it no, no state no part in state capture no. whatsoever even by omission because remember you're most powerful person no. in Lutuli no. with troops that you have deployed yeah. in government yeah. can i tell you yeah the power of the sc mm. can be misleading you can think that you have all the powers <laughs> the yeah. end of the matter you don't have those powers yeah you don't have them when you're sc you facilitate processes you educate, you guide, you don't have power, you don't take a decision on your own. Yeah. Even the smallest thing. So I've, I've always mistake, mistook you for being too powerful, man. Actually, it was a mistake. I, I remember people were saying, I'm prime minister. <laughs> yeah. And they were la I was laughing at them and saying, it's nice to be looked uh, upon and seen as prime minister. Yeah. Uh, but let's do the work properly. Yeah. I think you, you, had the, you had a lot of power. Maybe you didn't have a, a direct uh, in, in a sense, uh, a guilt on state capture, but I don't think you are so powerless. No, you are not powerless. Yeah, you have a responsibility. You must exercise it with responsibility. Yeah, that responsibility, you must be very responsible yeah. in implementing it. What is your comment about the fact that the court yesterday has found that your secretary general uh, uh, is 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 in contempt of court, right, by not handing over your cadre deployment? A, a, a minute which will either prove or disprove everything you've just told me can now. I tell you? Yeah, what do you think can about I tell that? You? Yeah, they can uh, find him uh, in contempt of court. So the he's, he's going to go to jail. The result of the matter, he handed over the the, the, the the minutes. Yeah. Historically. Yeah. I'm saying this in public. Yes. Uh, uh, the, 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 the 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 deployment committee doesn't have minutes. It doesn't keep minutes like yeah. in a in a sense of no. a, a, a committee or you know, an you NEC, know, you know etc. Yes. You know why it doesn't do that? It's because if I'm a minister, I want to make an appointment. Yeah. I go to the deployment committee and say, we have gone through the selection process. Yeah. Uh, we are recommending this. Yes. Cater. Is there any yeah. objection? So what did they hand over to the DA? Because the DA says you handed over a redacted version of the truth. No. You didn't hand over what SMSs happened? and WhatsApps, no. etc. No. How do you keep WhatsApp and, uh, and SMSs <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for seven so, years? So the, are you saying the court found it uh, was wrong? I, I don't know. You know, uh, court, uh, court overreach is not my competence to judge. Yeah. But sometimes you find judgments that uh, say things that are impossible, you know. Yeah. But there are no minutes. They will not find them. They can go and search it. Yeah. They must actually... So are you saying he may be imprisoned wrongly? He's not going to be imprisoned because... Why, why, why not? Well, because I wouldn't be, I mean, Zuma was in prison for the same thing. There's nothing he, he has kept. Because the only person who tried to have minutes was... Uh, yeah. Uh, the deputy president, oh, David Mabuza, yeah, he has handed all those. Yeah, yeah, he has handed all those. Uh, ordinarily. So is uh, is a DA right to say then we are in a constitutional crisis because the court has said this person is in contempt, yeah. right? And therefore, the next necessary step is if you are in contempt, you then go to prison. That's right. We will wait for that pro for that process, but we, well, that will create a crisis, isn't it? There is no contempt. There's there no contempt. No minutes. Yeah.
Simple. We think the contempt of Zuma, because they are, they are, they are saying that that contempt itself was the ANC leaving him to the dogs, Ooh. you know, uh, with Jacob Zuma. No, Jacob Zuma mm. is an adult, old man, over 80 now. Yeah. Okay. He takes decisions on his own. Yeah. Okay. That I know. It's one of the things that you cannot fault a Zuma for. Yeah. He's taking decisions. Zuma takes decisions. Yeah. He is not shying away from decisions. Mm -hmm. So you can say he's a conduct of Zuma and so forth. I, yeah. I will listen to you. I worked with him. You see, when you work with him, I was sector general. Yeah. When you work with him, you don't sleep at night. Mm. You keep your eyes open. You must monitor every step. Yeah, you could change the cabinet at 12 o'clock. We know that. Yes. And sometimes you wake up as sector general. You hear on the news. Of, of a decision. That the decision has been taken, yeah. you will have to manage that con consequences of that decision. Yeah. You see, one time there was something called fire pool yes. in Ghana. Yeah. And, and I said to Jace, was the DSJ, Jace, let's go to Ghana, let's open the fire pool. And we went there, we found the, we found the swimming pool, big yeah. swimming pool. Yeah. And uh, when we came back, General asked us, where is the, the fire pool? I said, no, we have seen a, power, a swimming pool, yeah. a big swimming pool with a lot of water yeah. that can be used as a fire pool in case of fire. Yeah. But but Mbalula has thrown you all under the bus, said you lied to save Zuma yeah. on this whole swimming pool, fire yeah. pool thing. But but uh, JJ, you yeah. were a journalist already when we went there with, with Jesse. Yeah. When we came back, we didn't say it's a fire pool. Yeah. Everybody in the state... Uh, no, I know what you said then, but I'm saying how do you account now for your Secretary General to, in public, say he, you guys lied to save Zuma? No. no. If I said there was a, f a swimming pool yeah. with a lot of water, yeah. which can be used as a fire pool in case of fire, that's not a lie. It's a fact then, it's a fact today. Yeah. But do, don't you think he was, he was, in a sense, overreaching to, uh, by, to scandalize Zuma now by saying oh we like to protect no. you when the uh, zuma was the president of the ANC, yeah uh, and many of p people didn't uh, they protect zuma yeah they protect the, the nc yes okay they protect the that, like you protected ramaphosa on the palapala issue because your own <laughs> president uh, becky said you guys have abused your majority in parliament no. by by protecting palapala a, a, a no. issue after a panel of judges said he has got a case to answer. No. The problem is yeah. that when people are not in parliament, yeah. they don't know how caucus works. Uh, they think that we just get told. We discuss issues in caucus. And but I don't issues. think you discussed the appointment of Mapisha Ngakula, frankly. You just told them this is who you vote for. Let's be honest about no, that no, one. we discussed it. And then was there, dis yeah. was there, was there disagreement there by somebody, not one person in the caucus no said this person is not capable? No, there was no disagreement. And yeah. I can also tell you, JJ, yeah. as, a, as, a, as a speaker of parliament, yeah. she was great. She executed her duties. Yeah, except that uh, she, she had that cloud hanging over her head throughout her term. It's not, this, yeah. is, this cloud that has made her go down is not new. You knew it no. before you no. appointed there. No, I, I, I didn't know it. Okay. I don't, not at all, but the Holomisa wrote countless letters no, to you about Holomisa. it. Holomisa has no program to <laughs> campaign. He has no program to campaign at all. <laughs> you see, when something happens in the NC, yeah. he talks about that for two weeks. We allow him to, to talk about yeah. it for two weeks. He has no program to campaign. Yeah. There are two in Parliament. You know, this morning they were in one uh, TV station with Michel, Reverend Michel. Yeah. They said they must uh, uh, applying for a job yeah. of a speaker. Now, my, my, my question they was... They were applying for a job? Yes, they were, because they say, I put somebody outside of the ANC. Yeah. They were applying for a job. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you now. Yeah. Now, when I want to be appointed a speaker, there are two. It means we must leave one person for the union. <laughs> and we appoint Mr. as a speaker. We must leave one person for, 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 for the HCTP. Yeah. It is irrational. Yeah. Okay. It is just irrational. It's excitement yeah. of the season we're in. Yeah, no, I understand all of that, but I, I want you to concede something. It yeah. truly uh, is not true to say that in the caucus everything is discussed. M uh, the president woke up and appointed the Speaker of Parliament as a cabinet minister. No. And I asked the speaker, no, no, I asked the speaker the question, you can contradict her if you like. Yes. Uh, at that point, I said, uh, Metandi was my guest uh, just f a few uh, weeks after she was then now 
defense minister. And I said, but were you consulted? Was parliament consulted that you as a head of parliament suddenly will become a subordinate no. to another no. uh, arm of uh, the, uh, no. uh, another no. arm of the no. state? No. So there was a vacancy. Uh, professor, I yeah. Professor, mm. you don't know how these things work. Uh, let, me, let me educate you. It's so nice to educate a professor. <laughs> <laughs> Just educate a professor. How do these things work? You see, we are MPs. Yeah. That is first and foremost. Yeah. We go to parliament as members of parliament. Yes. And we're members of parliament of the ANC. Yeah. Okay. We go there. When we are MPs, we get appointment to responsibilities. Yeah. In the other arm of government. Yes. But when that president appoints somebody to be a cabinet minister, yeah. he consults structures of the party. Not the not parliament. Not parliament. Yeah. So parliament can just wake up and they do, suddenly no, they don't have a no. speaker. The the party structures go to parliament to say there's this discussion, this is how things are going to happen. Yeah. Can I tell you if we were choices, uh, we would all be in different portfolios, we'll choose what we like. Now the right that we're, it is limited uh, right for you to say what you want. Actually, we're going to the end. Nobody is sure that he is going to go back as a minister. Nobody. Yeah. And nobody is going to be sure what portfolio will he get. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if he's appointed to a portfolio, thank you very much, uh, and that's it. And the NC will be consulted, and if the NC agrees, you, you, you can say what you want to do. Yeah. That is a decision. I want just to talk about a, a few things that you are promising people ahead of the 29th, yes. right? And, and, and we've already started doing that because one of the big, big question marks that have been put on the ends, whether we, we and I like it or not, is the whole issue of integrity, right? Whether or not can we have a trusted group of leaders. Your own president, Mbeki, former president, said that you are abusing your power in parliament. All the things you are telling me now, yes. he's, he's not convinced. And uh, you can't tell me he doesn't understand. Uh, how parliament works. He's yes, saying but, you're abusing your majority there. You didn't want to investigate ESCOM. He made a range of things. Even uh, lately, he even said, oh, how do, how do I even campaign for you? Because, you know, I led with a, a group of criminals or somebody in my branch could be a crook. So there's a, there's a whole issue of integrity. I want you to, in, in one fell soup, tell me what? why should people now believe that the NC, with its renewal program, will be on top of this integrity what? issue? One holy land for me yeah. that I don't walk on, even if I take off the shoes. Yeah. I don't criticize former presidents. Okay. I don't for, uh, criticize former SGs. Yeah. You know, I took over from Halima. I want you to remember once where I take, took a public problem and I take Halima. Yeah. I, I don't do that. You, you know why? It's because leadership is continuous. Mm. Okay. Leadership is continuous. If you take a, a leadership position, you take that position foot stewards. Mm. Okay. You, you don't select what you want and what you don't want. Yeah. If there are flaws, you take that leadership position with its flaws. Yeah. And you try to do your best to execute. Yeah. So I don't want to, to talk about what President Peggy says. Uh, now, the latest statement was that ANC members must campaign for the ANC. Yeah. I welcomed that. Okay. And to me, I stick to that now. Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, so you can comment on the positive thing he said, yeah. when but he the say, negative no. When he says, when he says, ANC members must come must come in for the ANC. Yeah. I stick to that, yeah, yeah. because he, he is now the former president of the ANC. Yeah. Okay. But what do you tell the people who are listening tonight about ANC's integrity? Can they no. believe that the ANC, right, given all the stories we have heard on let, the state capture, tell you. can can rescue itself from okay, okay, that okay. precipice? Let me tell you. Mm. Somebody asked me uh, a week ago. Mm. They said to me, "What do you think of the ANC as chairperson?" Yeah. I said to them, I'm a chairperson of the ANC for the second term. Mm -hmm. And I said, the current term is a big improvement to the last term. Okay. And they asked me, what improvement is it? I said, one, it is more useful. Two, it is coherent. Yeah. It is coherent. Three, they discuss issues not from slates. Uh, the last NEC was a big problem because it was divided almost in half. In half by slaves, and, and yeah. And therefore, as you sit there, you are trying to pull different ideas and factions yeah. into a decision. Yeah. Today, you have a more coherent uh, leadership of the NC. 
more useful. I love those young people. There are yeah. the, the many. They, they are coherent. They, uh, they are products of the youth league. Yes. You see, with all its flaws. Mm. But what comes out of that mm. is a thinking leadership that is useful. So bottom line, you are improving. You think that you are on a good path of yes. improvement. Yes. That's the point I'm making. Let's talk about jobs. Yes. In 2009, you promised 5 million jobs. Yes. And you are very unequivocal about it. In fact, I was surprised that hey, 5 million jobs, yes. that's, that's, that's like a, yes. a, too far a bridge to cross. Yes. The following term, I had, uh, so the, the five years, those who have not achieved, the following term, then you said, no, 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 we are no longer going to promise jobs, we are promising job opportunities. Mm. I see now that in the current manifesto, you are now promising 2.5 million job opportunities. Yes. Right? Um, and when I interrogated your spokesperson recently in a debate that we've had on, on TV, she, she conceded that uh, job opportunities and jobs are two different things. Yes, they are. Right? Why are you not giving us a target on jobs then? Why, why this, 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 this uh, uh, sort of uh, maneuvering in terms of the, 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 the nomenclature to call this opportunities rather than jobs, when in the past you were bold enough to say, Five million jobs. Now, you see, Professor mm. Daban, what you should do mm. one day, you have the capacity to do that. Look at the nature of the economy. Yeah. The economy is 70% in the hands of the private sector. Yes. 30% in the hands of the state. Mm. Now, if the 30% says we'll create jobs yeah. uh, and uh, don't qualify that, yeah. uh, it is talking to the sentiment. Mm. Okay, it is talking to the sentiment and not the reality. Not person. the reality, yes. because if we must create jobs, the the public sector will create jobs in the public sector, mm. create the environment. The private sector must cooperate, create more jobs. I never worked in the public sector. I'm working for government for the first time today. Now, this time, mm. I always work for the private sector. I, I used to go to the mines, work for the mine yeah. owners. And, and, and I would imagine that the government then would have said, we have so many jobs in the mines. Mm. But actually those jobs were jobs of the mine owners, which yeah. is the private sector. What we should be uh, engaging in here, uh, opportunities is opportunities in the state. And uh, those opportunities will depend on whether people pursue it. Yeah. But I, I'm putting a new argument and mm. a debate to young people. I've been to a number of them. I've been to uh, KZN. I've been everywhere uh, talking to young people. I say to them, this government of the NC is flooding society with educated young people. Yeah. Very educated. Uh, it sponsors education from birth to first degree. Yeah. Okay. And as a result of that, the number of graduates has increased many folds. Yes. Um, and many say, uh, we haven't seen new universities. I said, you haven't seen new universities. You are going to see a few coming, trickling in. Yeah. But the result of the matter, you go to VETS, which used to be a white university. You needed a, 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 a ministerial approval to get to VETS. Yeah. Today, majority of students at VETS are black. You go to uh, UJ, you go to UP, you go to UCT, you go to any majority are black. And that floods society with young, educated black people. And creation of jobs in the economy is not keeping with the pace. And I was saying to these people, that in itself changing the nature of, of society. Mm. But I'm not understating the agency of uh, creating employment. Let me give you one last example mm. on this one. A few young chaps at home start a project there. They produce maize yeah. in village land. They produce serious maize. They try to work with young people. Young people refuse. They say, pay us money for that land. Yeah. To get my point. And that tells me the mindset that we must work on uh, of getting your hands, putting your skin on the fire to create wealth. And that thing has collapsed, JJ. Uh, people think that, uh, and maybe we are to blame for this. 
we created a passive society, mm. a, a society that expect government expect to, to create deliver. to create the jobs yeah. the president did say that uh, it's not the job of government to create jobs and he was he he, he, he was uh, insulted no he was in he wasn't insulted he, he was changed insulted. his mind no he was insulted in a few no. days because no, he was insulted he, badly <laughs> <laughs> but he contradicted himself what must we say he, he was insulted what, what must we believe now i'm telling you jj yeah uh, he was insulted he had to uh, duck it and died. dive yeah uh, being insulted that why can you say that job must create the government of yeah and it changed but uh, i can tell you yeah uh, i'm a worker i've read some economics a little bit yeah you see i know that if you you go and make a promise that is not workable mm. that is a disaster mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you want to talk about employment creation in south africa yeah. you never make it just pure government responsibility yeah because that's it must the be a partnership. It's the only your, your, your social compact comes in. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Although you haven't done the social compact. And uh, you know, social compacting. Yeah. There have been efforts to do that. But it failed. Can I tell you something? Yeah. If or you nobody have, wants to sign. No. If you have partners who do not know what social compacting is. Yeah. Then you will never have it. You will not have it because social compacting means. Yeah. All the three partners: government, labor. And the private so you're, sector. So you are basically saying your president yeah. was ambitious no, to say it will happen in 100 days. No, no, listen. They must all say, this is what we are com going to compromise. This yeah. is what we are going to put in. Yeah. And that will work. Uh, for example, the, 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 the labor must be able to say, we'll moderate our demands. Yeah. And the private sector must say, uh, if you moderate your demands, we invest in the following sectors. Yeah. And the state says, we'll give you tax holiday. In, 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 in the following Are you saying there isn't a willingness to come to the, no. mid, to the center, if to the do, middle? If you don't come to that, it doesn't yeah. happen. I've been to many of those meetings. Yeah. And uh, you listen to all partners. All partners think that you can bargain on social partnership. Yeah. You, you don't bargain on social partnership. You compromise and you commit. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is very interesting. I mean, I've, been, I've never had an answer like that about my question on social compacting. <laughs> And that, that tells me that you guys sometimes don't sing from the same hymn sheet. That's why I've got three ministers in charge of electricity. Can you explain that to no, me in simple terms? No, 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 no. no. But you are, there's they're three not. of you. There's a new they're minister not. of electricity. There's I'm yourself. There's Pravin Godan. I'm not a minister of electricity. No, no, no. Whatever it is. You, you, mean, you know what I mean. I'm not a minister of electricity. But your, your conference was clear that you must have one minister responsible for I, that whole energy. I'm not a minister of electricity. Uh, atmosphere. JJ, I'm not a minister of electricity. I understand. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not a minister of electricity. Explain electricity. the three ministers. Yeah. Explain. Uh, what? Explain why do you have three uh, after no, your conference no, yet have one? No. The conference has taken a decision. Yeah. Uh, and we have time to implement that. And I think yeah. when there is a change after the 29th of May, yeah. it's an opportunity to readjust the minister. And how, how cabinet is structured? Yes. Uh, would you agree with Tabisa that yes. you should at least half the thing is too big? No, listen. Yeah. You know, JJ, mm. uh, a person who says, we have never been to school, and say, the day I go to school, yeah. I will have 10 distinctions. Yeah. <laughs> you must know that it's a person who has not <laughs> gone to school and who promises to have 10 distinctions. And you, yeah. you must uh, allow him to say so. To get my point. But a child who's at school says, if this term but I But you get, need a cabinet of 70 yeah, people. Yeah, man. If, in the, in the, if, if a person who's at school says, yeah. in this term, if I get three distinctions, I will have done one. That's, more, that's a person you must listen to. Then you must listen very carefully. Yeah. Because that person is, realistic. is in the field, is realistic, so forth. Yeah. Restructuring the cabinet, reducing the number of ministries. Yeah. But, but those happens. were your words. Those were your no. words exactly. No. The current president, no. when he no. started, no. he said, no. I'm going to cut cabinet. No, no, no. This, this one, JG, please, you no have man. to help me. Wait, wait. He increased it instead. No, that's not true. He has uh, more deputy ministers than JG. the previous guy. JJ. Yeah. There were 36 ministers. Yeah. There are now 28. That is not an increase. I don't know what... But he increased the deputies. Uh, come yeah. on. Yeah. He increased the deputies. Yeah, I have one. And I always had one. Yeah. All I'm saying, mm. there were 36 ministers, there are 28. Yeah. And he's committing to reconfigure it it's again. Even further. Yeah. Yes. 
And to me, that is more systematic than just... So you agree that we, we, this thing must be cut to size? It must be reduced. Yeah, but there not to 10 ministers. There is agreement on that. Yeah, but, okay. but you are saying the extreme that cut it by half and remove all deputy ministers, it's a, a, a sentiment of somebody who's not been to school. When you're not, when you're not in school and you say, I will have 20 distinctions, yeah. it's okay, give him a discount to that person. Yeah. Uh, but I told that there's an agreement, though, let's concede this, that you, you may not necessarily need three ministers in charge of the energy sector. No. You may need one or two. For example, yeah. the president has announced uh, publicly yeah. that the public enterprises will not exist after the, 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 the cabinet. Yeah. Uh, he agreed that uh, SOEs will go to line ministries. Yes. Uh, that is That's a, already a configuration, that a, re, a reconfiguration. That is an, an agreement. Yeah. Uh, how it is going to be reconfigured it's not something that I can imagine now. Yeah. Okay. After the break, I want to talk a little bit about your portfolio. One of the things that you've said a lot is that you want to create an environment within which jobs can be created, economy can grow. Okay. And I want to see how, with the power you had for the last five years, yes. you have used that or not. Yes. After the break, we continue our conversation with Samson Guedemantage, the chairperson of the African National Congress, has an answer for everything. Okay. Hey, everything. Let's take a break. After the break, we carry on on Frank Dialogue on your radio. Frank Dialogue on your radio with Dr. J.J. Tabani. Let's talk frankly. Yeah, birthday. It's your birthday. Mkuksa Piri presents Mkuksa's birthday comedy night happening on the 26th of April at Rubber City Hall in Tembisa with live performances by Oscar Omoji, Do Me Stop Nonsense, Summary, Chomi Jesu, Cute Dube, Smoking Yembe, and many more. Tickets are now selling at a Compute Ticket. It's a birthday celebrated through comedy. Don't miss out. Yeah. Frank Dialogue on your radio with Dr. J.J. Tabani. Let's talk frankly. It's an election festival and my guest tonight, Samson Gwede Mantashe, uh, engaging in what one can call e uh, you know, uh, election polemics, but also Um Khabulo tonight here, uh, giving us his political perspective. Always good to hear uh, from the very top of the tree, uh, uh, so to speak. A lot of people criticized your department on two fronts and I want you tonight to just clarify these two matters for me. Firstly, they're saying that some 2,500 mining licenses were not approved over a, a year to two year cycle. Maybe you can clarify what the log jam is, whether it, there's not enough capacity in your department to approve even 10 of those licenses if 2,500 are stuck. Secondly, a lot of people were critical about the fact that three miners were stuck. I mean, I think now it's... Uh, Day 1500 or something, I may be wrong about the number, but a long time, right? And that the, the, the government had every capacity to put money in that project to extract those bodies, whatever the cost could have been by mobilizing the industry, by digging into your own capacity. Those two things can talk about a poor environment that's been created. We're talking about Zamazamas, where uh, mining companies dug up the place, left the country without implementing their social plans and therefore leaving it dangerous for societies. I've raised three issues. Please ad answer all of them. Yes. The, the first one, mm. JJ, mm. is that we had applications. Yes. We had backlogs. Okay. We said so. Yeah. But the exaggeration that we have not approved a single one was an exaggeration. 2,500? Out of the 2,500, 624 were processed. Okay, approved. Okay. They were processed. Not approved. They were processed. Let me tell you processing. Yeah. Uh, because you want to understand. Mm. Processing is approved, mm. is reject, mm -hmm. is to tell a person that your application is on is top of Is missing this or that, yes. This, your application is on top of another application mm. that has been agreed. So uh, 624 were processed. Yeah. So 
the two feet, 2,500, and we're working on an electronic system yeah. which we have now approved. Yeah. We've got it now. It has gone through all the stages. Uh, it is being tested. It is going to be implemented. Yeah. But we're hoping that when that ele uh, electronic system is working, we'll clear the backlog. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's what internationally mining jurisdictions use. Yeah. Uh, What's your standard operating procedure? I mean, 624 six means 25% uh, of the applications you receive, yes. literally. Yes. Um, is that is that at the top of your excellence? You no, you process that pre manually. Uh, and the manual processing of application is not as efficient. Oh, I assume you'll improve that by making this electronic system yes. so that you are able to we then get to at least 50%. We have now approved a catastrophic system. It must yeah. clear all of them. Yeah. Right. When it was in a year cycle, in a West year cycle, yeah, must clear all of them. That is one, yes. The lily mine, yes, yeah. because you say three bodies and so forth. Yes, mine. let me give you a history to mine disasters and then come to lily mine mm. and tell you where we are now. Mm. You see, uh, uh, JJ, uh, in, in 1985. There was a disaster in Kindros. 177 people died in 10 minutes because of methane. Mm. Okay. Uh, Janko, which was the owner, dealt with that disaster. Okay. Because they were, uh, they were mining that uh, mine. Yes. They were making mine out of it. It cannot be that when there is a disaster, then the state must be called upon. Okay. Okay. You can remember the the, 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 the Valrev disaster. 54 miles fell through the, 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 the shaft. Mm. And the uh, Anglo-American dealt with that disaster. Send a disaster. I can give you a long list of Yeah, them. but if they didn't deal with it, wouldn't yeah. the government, no. through your licensing no. conditions, no, be responsible? Uh, what you, 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 you are not doing, I'm not waiting now. Because I'm giving you this background. Mm. So that I can tell you what we are doing now. Yeah. Okay. What had happened there is that you had a disaster, uh, an accident in uh, Lily Mine. Yeah. Three bodies on a container went underground. And at that point in time, there was no owner. The owner collapsed with the mine. Mm. We are now at the tail end of a process of uh, processing Section 11 to give um, an, an owner license to mine a new owner yes 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 unfortunately it's the same owner australians have come back and said no please we want to continue mining there. oh i see now we're giving them the license they will mine lily mine the condition is that they must will, remove the body take the container out of underground okay there is agreement on that so there's just an, uh, an outstanding visit for yeah. us to go there but you have never announced this anyway we don't announce things before we show. I was a councillor at uh, TJ. Mm. I, was, I was a councillor. As a councillor, one of the things that makes many councillors accused of being liars yeah. is because they go to a council and present a, a proposal. It is approved by council. They go and announce it. Yeah. It takes three years. Yeah. Now, as a councillor, I learned basic things that when you are doing something... Do it and finish. You do it. When there is beginning of procurement, you go and announce it. Yeah. So the gap between the announcement and the execution yeah. is not long. So we're sorting out Lily Mine. Mm. But let me give you what you have not asked me. We are not. We have not sorted out Harmony, which has a number of bodies in the Free State, underground of illegal miners. Mm. We're working on that. It's our next target. Those illegal miners must be taken out of underground. Okay, so you are basically saying that you have resolved the lily mine issue. Well, resolving it. Yeah. The day that a uh, container is out of underground, yeah. I will say we have resolved it. All right, let's talk because we unfortunately have run out of time. We are left with five minutes. In these five minutes, can you tell South Africa how you are going to resolve the issue of load shedding? in simple terms because you have made many many promises the secretary general says no. said by the by december it will be all over there's a, a moving target your previous ceo of escom said in 18 months it will be done it wasn't done 
what can you tell me, right, as a citizen now, right, that will convince me that you'll be on top of load shedding? Because that is what's sitting in the middle of job creation uh, in economic growth. I would have uh, uh, preferred this is that yeah. you invite uh, uh, Dr. Ram Hooper for that. And you have a grilling period. I would have preferred that. I'll invite him, but uh, surely you, no, as part no, of the no, cabinet, no, you know no, what no, the story no, no. is. Let me tell you why is that the case. Yeah. Because we must demystify this thinking that there is a stampede in that space. Yeah. There's no stampede in that space. Uh, Dr. Ram Kupa is dealing with that space. Yeah. And he has been given the authority to do so. He's working on it. Yeah. Okay. And I said earlier, what I love about it, he is not in the euphoria that do away with coal. He says, optimize the operation of coal generating power stations. Yeah. And make them operate optimally and increase the energy availability factor. Yeah. It's a correct approach. So what is but the common message about procuring? Because you are, you are, you are involved somehow in terms yes. of the procuring of additional power, additional energy, etc. Right? There's just window, bid, bid window number, yes. God knows what. Right? Yes. But since three years ago, I don't think there's been additional capacity that's there been procured. Been. No, no, there was an emergency procurement. The car power shipping fell through. No, there, there you been, know what is there, this? There what, what has been procured? You know, South Africa mm. is having the biggest uh, project of renewables. Mm. Okay. One thing that lobbyists never talk about about renewables is that mm. renewables, unfortunately, if you you you, you connect. Um, let me say 6,000. Yeah. You are going to get energy worth 2,000 megawatts mm. because of the intermittent nature of renewables. Yes. So we've been quite aggressive on renewables and they will not resolve the load shedding issue. Uh, the fact that we have issued the, 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 the bid window for gas will go a long way in resolving it. We are going to re uh, re issue a request for proposal for yeah. nuclear. It will go a long way because yeah. renewables work better when they are combined with a base load technology. Okay. Last question. But I'm giving you yeah. the right to talk to Dr. Ramakoba on it. I understand. Because he will give you details on this. All right. Thank you very much for, for talking to us tonight. But the last question. If on the 29th of May you lose elections. Yes. And you are, according to the current poll, just 41 or 42 percent. What do you believe it on? It doesn't matter. And you are faced with choosing between the DA and the EFF. What would you do? Um, Be frank with me about it. Here's, no. a, here's a clear choice. It's either you no. partner with the EFF, you are at 55 uh, percent, or going you partner with the DA, you are at 60 percent. I'm going to, to, to be frank with you. Yeah. We are not working for a coalition. Yes, understand. We're working that. for outright, outright win, oh, like all, all, like, all like everybody right. else. No, leave everybody else. <laughs> uh, everybody else. Everybody <laughs> else. Talk about moonlight and, and moonshot and, <laughs> and all that. Everybody yeah. Else. We talk about outright majority. Yeah. That's what we. If you want. don't get it, no. we do coalesce with no. each of you know of any no. of these co co coalitions. Yeah. Are not something you plan. They are a consequence. Yeah. Okay. So the other people are, are, are mistaken because they're busy planning a moonshot let coalition. The, let them uh, plan. It's never a plan. It's a, it's a consequence. Of, of, of the outcome of the yes, election. Of the election. Yeah. That's why... So you are not going to put your head on the block? No. That's why... But you are not ruling out anybody? No. That's why many of the coalitions that we have in local government don't work. Mm. It's because people mistake a consequence with a strategy. Mm. And it's not the same. So I, are you saying there's no strategy at the moment about what to, what to do should you fall below 50? No. What we are putting emphasis on today is that let's work hard. That's why we're all over. Yeah. Y you, you know, I always say uh, you are taking all your ministers throughout the country, all your ministers. Yeah. And uh, he was complaining about this. Yeah. He must complain about that, but we're many, we go everywhere, we talk to people, yeah. there are two. Yeah. <laughs> That's the difference. That's the big difference. Yeah. Now, so he, 
He must not pretend as if he is not going everywhere, people yeah. out of choice. There are only There two. are people who are speculating that your policies are closer to that of the DA and should you have a not choice? Then. Not and then. No, no, but, but they're saying, should you have a choice between the EFF and the DA? You would yeah. lean more towards the DA. Yeah. Uh, are they mistaken no. completely? No. What is well, with the mistake that they don't do yeah. is that we are the governing party. Yeah. Are they, yes. are they particularly yes. hostile to you or they maybe are, hostile in a coalition they are ho uh, when they, are, they are looking for power no, themselves? They are, they are hostile to us. Yeah. Yes, I have listened to the president of the EFF yeah. who said what they are working for is to remove ANC from power. Yeah. Now that is hostility. No, but every opposition wants to remove you. It's not only okay. the EFF. Now, Even Tlabisa just said so. People must vote for an alternative government. Now, Mayor Gutlabis, yeah. uh, <laughs> he wants 10 distinctions. He is not, he's not in school. <laughs> I'm gonna, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm not okay. going to extract an answer on this one. No, no, we're working but for outright uh, majority. Yeah. Uh, we'll and and, you, and you, think, you think you can get that? We will get it. So the trends will change from yes. from the local government we're elections, get that. where you're at 45%. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll get that. We'll talk after the elections. Okay. But thank you so much for your time. I will time. come when you invite me after elections. I'll invite you before the elections, but I'll also invite you no, after invite the elections. invite me after the elections. After? Yes. To come and uh, uh, revise this conversation. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you it's very much commitment. for your time. I thank you. Uh, that was uh, the chairperson of the ANC, that uh, Gwede Mantashe, talking to us here on the election festival at the top of the hour the EFF CIC Julius Malema is my next guest stay tuned
information. Hoof. 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 Dialogue on your radio with me on Kopote JJ Tawan. It's an election festival tonight as we started at 7 o'clock with uh, Tabisa, uh, William Kosi Tabisa, the leader of the IFP. Are you convinced? Do you believe him? Do you think that uh, he said some things that are interesting about uh, uh, what the IFP can do for you? Do you believe him? Do you really think the IFP, uh, as he was claiming, has a, a footprint across the country um, and not just a Zulu based regional party? Uh, did he convince you? I mean, he's, he's, he's all like quite a reasonable fellow. Um, uh, 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 whether you, you, you like what he said or not, of course, Guerra Mantashe uh, seeming to have answers for just about everything. Did you believe him? Do you believe, do you believe what he said about the NC's uh, appetite for integrity? Or is this something that remains a question mark in your mind? But of course, those two conversations going quite well. I know that a lot of you wanted to come through, but there was just not enough time to get your calls through. But we thought we, 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 we hope that uh, we were able to cover some of your questions that you sent through various social medias and so on. Of course, we are just awaiting the arrival of the CIC. Julius Malema, who is in the building, will be commencing with that conversation uh, shortly. You are on... Uh, frank dialogue on your radio across the country. The National Imbizo here tonight, the National Festival, ahead of that crucial vote of 29th May. Stay tuned. Frank Dialogue on your radio with Dr. J.J. Tabani. Let's talk frankly.
We are welcoming you from Equazy FM, Socials FM, Alex FM, Highway Radio, Sidibeng FM, Martina Masima Holo FM, 744 FM, Cosmo FM, Mums FM, Kwakwa FM, Ungu Youth Radio. It's a national imbizo tonight as we are awaiting the arrival of the CIC of the EFF shortly. You can, also, of course, give us a ring on 011-440-1396. What did you think of the conversations we have had since 7 o'clock? Do you believe any of these leaders? Do you think that any of them will give you uh, joy at the elections? It's Frank Dialogue on your radio with me on Kopoze JJ Tawanias Chief. Yeah? Commander in Chief. <laughs> in the house. Go <laughs> choking. <laughs> Commander in chief in the house. We're gonna be talking here. You know, I, I I've been I've been curious. Thank you for for being here. Yeah, really appreciate you. your thank time you always. Invite. Right. Um, uh, we've got an hour, and I want us to just yeah, focus sure. on a few controversial issues. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I wanted to couch tonight's um conversation. So in, I was asking the yeah. question, what is he going to ask me? Because me and him have been speaking talking for, for, so, for a many. Very long you know, time. we have three hours. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's why we must talk about fresh controversial things that happened in the last three, four weeks. Okay. I want to talk about constituencies tonight. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you are very strong on the African child. Mm -hmm. Right. And actually, a lot of people have criticized you about a couple of how you pick your constituencies. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about, let's start with the African question. A lot of people are saying, you know, if Julius Malema could just stand up one day and just say, we're going to close the borders, mm. she, you could get 50% more votes, right? Yes. And I want us to deal with that because I've just, if you listen to uh, a, a Patriotic Alliance, they're talking about uh, mass deportation. Right? Mm. You'd listen to Mashaba, same sort of story, mm. slightly tweaked. I was interested to hear Sabisa this evening, mm -hmm. uh, you know, almost say, taking a different view to say, no, 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 we can't come here with a sort of a xenophobic approach. Mm -hmm. Can we deal with that to say, is it a, a, a fair uh, assessment to say that you have not particularly read your constituency mm -hmm. about how they feel about foreigners and the fact that foreigners may take their jobs, etc., etc. They may be part of crimes, they may be part of drugs, what have you. Let's deal with that frankly tonight. Well, I'm <laughs> happy that we are in Alexander. Mm. So there was a xenophobic attack here in Alex mm. where people who were selling somewhere on the streets mm. were removed. Yeah. Successfully by those things of Dodola, what 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 was successful? Yeah, yeah. And that space was empty mm. for almost three days. Yeah. And Alexander people were the ones who were complaining that we want to buy tomatoes. Yeah. Want to buy vegetables. Yeah. And the people have been chased away. The people that we buy from. Yeah. If that was a genuine issue, mm. why after chasing those people from empty spaces, didn't South Africans go and occupy that space? and sell mm. those tomatoes mm. since they took your job and you successfully removed them mm. so why didn't you go and take the space that those people occupied so it's not a genuine concern yeah it's an attack you yeah. know you look at you splitting hair because there's nothing can attack the eff yeah one in terms of principle uh jj when we started th this is, is in our founding manifest 
it has never been an issue. The issue was expropriation of land without compensation. Yeah. They went everywhere and told people, but that yeah. was the an attack on the EFF. Yeah. When that was articulated very well and we stayed on it and never got shaken, they moved away. They said they are going to nationalize the banks, they are going to nationalize uh, the mines. We yeah. said this is our nationalization. We establish a state-owned mining company yeah. that is going to compete with the private sector. This is our nationalization of the banks. We establish a state-owned bank to compete with the commercial banks. Yeah. And you can't say this will destroy the banks. Why didn't public schools destroy private schools? Why do we have private school and have private public schools? Parallel, living and side by side. Mm. Private schools are still doing business even when there is public schools. Yeah. Why do we have private hospitals and public hospitals? And private hospitals are making more money even when there is an existence of public uh, hospitals. So, so that who said a public <coughs> bank will yeah. close a, a private bank? So Pri public mining company yeah. will close... Are you saying your call to say South Africa first is a wrong call? Because if it is. Uh, 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 if when I asked Tabisa about jobs, he's mm. saying uh, that approach to jobs is a South African first. They need to, if there's somebody in South Africa can do their job, don't give their job to a Zimbabwean. Have that, you ever listened to me talking about jobs? The EFF thing mm. is jobs. Mm. It's land and jobs now. Mm. Stop load shedding. And I say, this ANC people sleep with you to give you a job. Mm. We're going to stop that. Yeah. The only requirement you want is to have a South African ID mm. and have the qualifications. Yeah. South African ID, you South Africa first. South African yeah. ID. I mm. don't have to say South Africa first. Yeah. It's and I don't have to implied. be anti Africans. Yeah. When I say I love my wife, it doesn't mean I hate Sito. Yeah. No, I say South Africans, you will be a priority in terms of your qualifications and yeah. all of that. Because these are their but jobs. Don't, but you don't you think your message there is not accentuated then? Because people are always using a cloud that says, oh, this guy's going to open the borders and hire all the people from Zimbabwe. So, South Africans are people who are very open about everything. Mm. They would have said to me in the biggest rallies, stop that thing we are talking about. Yeah. Once I start talking about the love for Africans and how this country yeah. must unite the African continent, yeah. the whole stadium is receptive. Mm. Tell me of a country that is rich because of borders. Oh no, that country is very successful. It's a world-class country because of a fence. They've got a fence. And a fence led to success. Yeah. America has got no fence. 54 states mm. under one president, United States of America. Mm. Why are they not putting fence for themselves? Why is Europe not putting fence? If fence is a prerequisite for success, yeah. for a country to prosper, you need a fence. And even if you need a fence, there is no fence between Zimbabwe and South Africa. Mackenzie went, he showed you, there's no yeah. fence. <laughs> there's no yeah. fence in Lesotho. Actually, he thought he was exposing uh, that the, 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 these people have got no fence, they have been took. I said that long time ago, I said, you are acting like mad people. You have a gate, but you don't have a fence. Mm. And then you come back at your house without a fence. You open a gate to enter your yard. Mm. Doesn't make sense. There is no fence. Africans have moved. It yeah. is only those who are threatened by the unity of the Africans yeah. who perpetuate a message of hatred. But my last point is, why do you hate me for saying people must unite? I'm not dividing people. It seems that it be, it's a become an election issue because if you, you just have to look at what the ANC is doing in terms of the amendment of the um, uh, uh, Migration or Immigration Act, right? Do you think they're falling into that trap that they, they feel the noise of people uh, uh, as anti-African sentiment or anti-foreigner sentiment and they are now trying to fit into that, strengthen the borders, appoint the border management agency, you saw the border management agency mm -hmm. they were in full force this weekend, etc. Well, my brother, the 2019 yeah. anti-EFF campaign was dishing out title deeds. Mm. 
we don't want to take your land. Yeah, the title deeds. Yeah. Even people go title deeds here in Alexander. I'm like, to do what with that title deed? Yeah. Because it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. If anything, Alexander needs massive development, not title deeds. Mm. So, they said that in 2019. Mm. We, we, we were unshaken about it. Mm -hmm. And we still didn't win elections. I will never engage in a political expediency. Yeah at the altar of a principle rather die on the principle with your boots on than to die an amuba shapeless this one pulls you that way this one pulls you that way. before we know it you've got no shape you are shapeless and we can't define what kind of animal is this yeah i'm saying we need a borderless africa for free movements of people and goods and that free movement of people and goods doesn't mean undocumented because if I didn't want undocumented people, I would have said, don't take ID South Africans. Yeah. What are you doing with documents? All of us have to be identified. And it is documentation that will identify who we are. Even when African state is united, you still have to tell which, from which state are you. Europe without borders. They're still Italians. They're still Germans. They still uh, the British who yeah. are saying they're exiting uh, that thing. So you don't believe so in this whole thing about illegal immigration? You, you are saying that the borders must be open enough for, 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 for Africans to unite. You can't be illegal in Africa as African. Mm. Because if you follow that, all of us in this room will be in danger. Our roots come from there in the continent. Yeah. We're so all your, the whole there. hype about border management authority, you don't buy it? I, I don't care about that. It's, it's, a, it's a, like you said, it's a gimmick. It's an election gimmick. Yeah. They are, they, after that, they are going to leave it. The ANC. Yeah. The ANC. None of these people, mm. except Sir Ramaphosa, mm. crossed into Africa with a passport. Mm. They didn't have any documents. Jacob Zuma, Thabo Mbeki and them, they went. I, I think they have soon forgotten that. And the they fact have, that they're now telling us another story. Mm. When they were there, O.R. Tambo was treated like a state president by other African states. Yeah. But do you know that Nigeria, civil servants, had a money deducted from their salaries uh, called the uh, Liberation Fund, official from government mm. salaries to finance liberation movements in Africa, including the ANC and the PAC. Mm. So you for stand us to be liberated. The, 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 the EFF is going to stand by this principle. You are not going to be swayed by, by election mode where you people are beginning to say be soft, be, be a little bit soft on this whole issue of open borders. Well, my brother, mm. here is the whole manifesto. Mm. You have an issue with one. Yeah. What is your problem? Who said you are going to find a perfect woman? Where? <laughs> she's so beautiful but she might have those things of being noisy or something but yeah. i can work on that yeah so there's nothing called beautiful even dna yeah when you test children dna it doesn't say 100 percent. it said 99.9999 on the basis of that one that is missing there yeah this is not my child all right you sound like a fool if you a person argues like that all right let's talk about the second constituency now yeah. white people there is a, 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 a narrative about EFF and why. Because your emphasis obviously uh, African child, etc. Mm. You've always said you're not against white people. You are for black, the black mm -hmm. child, right? Let's talk about, let's talk to Africaners today. And yeah. some of them may be listening in some of the community radio stations joining us here tonight, right? And some are saying, hey, if Julius gets into the union buildings, you know, we're going to run for the hills. What do you say to them tonight? If you put an Englishman here mm. and put an African here yeah. and make me choose, I'll choose African here. Why? Because you d you know what you're dealing with. You a know, racist of an note. <laughs> he doesn't pretend. Yeah. He doesn't uh, create an impression that uh, we are together when we are not together. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, the other second point I like about uh, African is that yeah. majority of them have got one passport. Mm. So their loyalty is with this country. Mm. They might have a difficulty of identifying with us as one thing because they believe in two nations in yeah. one country. But these other ones, uh, white liberals that Biko had a problem with, mm. are the most dangerous people mm. who 
during the day denounces all manner of things and then they go behind closed walls to speak very bad about us and exclude us from our own economy. Mm. Afrikaners have fought. Yeah. They fought against the British. They fought against uh, their co colonial suppression yeah. in the country because they too were oppressed and had to fight for their own liberation against the British colonialism. So those are the kind of people that I will deal There's no white person I can drive to the sea. Mm. I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah. That has never been but my But are you attention. reaching out to these people to see what they are, their fears? You remember even the, 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 with the 94 era coming, there was mm. always this thing about white fears, mm -hmm. black aspirations, you know, uh, uh, contradistinctions between the two, etc. Looks like we're back there because white people seem to still be in this corner and that's why you have organizations that are mobilizing on the basis of that fear. How do you conquer that? I mean, you d listen to what John Stenison said after your 10th anniversary, talking about trying to, to hype the issue of, of kill the boer. And then even said, the era is genocide and went overseas and what have you. Uh, and that just showed that there's still, to, there's still a sense in which people can mobilize whites against something like the EFF that is talking about transformation, etc. Big issues about land, what, what that may be seen to be threatening Afrikaners. Well, <coughs> uh, there is nothing I can do mm. to contest with Swar Khafar. Mm. It's a Swar Khafar, it's not real. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a scaremongering mm. that these people, when they take over, they're going to do this. This yeah. is the same thing about Mandela. Yeah. That we're not going to be led by a prisoner mm. who's going to come and take our land. Of course, he was talking nationalization himself, Mandela at the time. Absolutely. So, In the first few days. Yes. <laughs> and, of then, uh, and then <coughs> they left. Those are the hobos, the white hobos you see today here in South Africa. They left, left their properties at the Val River. They left and said, these people are going to kill us. When they were there, they realized they are not rich. The rent, compared to those currencies, there is nothing. Mm. Some of them had to do the jobs that we were doing for them outside there. Mm. And they said, the best thing, let's go back. Mm. And when they came back, it was too late. So... I, I can't deal with that. And uh, yeah. these things of ours are written in English. Yeah. And of late, I saw the SDS printed Africans now. Yeah. And all different <coughs> languages. So, uh, they can read that for themselves. And they know what I want. Because that's what they Africaners wanted. I want what Africaners wanted from the British. Mm. I'm asking for the same thing. And they know what that means. It means that they are going to be in a dinner table with monkeys. Mm. And they don't want that. This boy is asking for mad things. How can I be equal to my subject? So we cannot listen to that. We listen to genuine concerns. Yeah. Let's go to the white Africaners. They gave each other land in the 90s when they know, when they knew 1994 is coming. Mm -hmm. The clerk and them went to explain to them, ran referendum, said, guys, let's allocate ourselves. There was a road that was built between Rustenberg and Mafigeng. And this yeah. story, I get told by Tandi Mudisa, she's still alive. Yeah. When they were building this road to Mafigeng, they had to go past the farms. When they pass the farms, they are expropriating land. Mm. But South Africa's law says when you expropriate land, uh, you must compensate. Yeah. Now they say to the white Afrikaners, bring title deeds so that we can... Uh, compensate you for the piece of land we took when we're passing by your farm. No, 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 no. That is my contribution. That is my contribution. You know why? They don't have title deeds. Mm. Most of these farmers don't have title deeds. They were given, they gave to each other. There's yeah. a comrade of mine <coughs> who went to take a land in uh, Midval uh, when we we're occupying land. Told this white Afrikaner, my guy, from here to here, from today, is me. That man said, I'm going to fight with you. I'm going to take you to police station. You can't take my land. And this comrade says to me, I just went to buy a fence and I fenced that place. Yeah. One neighbor's me and that guy. Mm. He can't go anywhere. He doesn't have a title deed. Yeah. He was told as he was doing door to door. It's not from Midval. Yeah. Oh no, there is an African there who has taken a huge piece of land and everybody is scared, very scared of that guy. Yeah. My guy is now farming pigs mm. in that land. And the Afrikaner, they are together. They advise each other of, no, but the year we can do this. Anama Bambiri doesn't have papers. Yeah. 
Yes. So those most so that of brings us to the issue of land, which is truly what the the the, the, the fear is. Mm-hmm. The whole issue about expropriation of land without compensation. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you make it palatable? And I know that you're saying we're not scared of this, and mm-hmm. we're not supposed to listen to mm-hmm. that. How do you make it palatable to people? Because frankly, you know, I had a conversation with somebody from Afri Forum a couple mm-hmm. of years ago, mm-hmm. and I asked him a simple question. Let me chief, when you've got thirty hectares. Yes. Yes. Of land, and you live on two hectares, mm-hmm. and two hectares is a big, a big piece of land, right? Even if you put a massive house, you still have, yes, yes. like, you won't even see where the sun is setting. Mm. But let's say you have five hectares, just mm-hmm. to be, to be mm-hmm. silly, right? Why, why can't we give up this other twenty-five and, and give it to other people mm-hmm. because actually you are not using it, mm. right? Is that the kind of approach that you may uh, 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 use to implement this thing when you actually now have the power, right? Yes. Or people must just run, must just mm-hmm. know that you have the two or three hectares, that doesn't matter, all that, man, that land doesn't belong to you anymore. I think that sometimes w- w- maybe we must simplify this thing for them. EFF is in power on the 1st of June. What do you do on expropriation? R- by, mind you, you and the ANC fail together and all the black parties mm-hmm. in the last five years to do what the resolution was already giving you a check to do. Yes. Well, you can't say you and the ANC failed together. The yeah. ANC chickened out at the last minute and you must put the blame where it matters. Yeah. The ANC at the last minute, after we canvassed the whole country, yeah. majority of people said expropriate land without compensation. Yeah. Submission said expropriate land without compensation. Yeah. You are saying to me, people are scared. Which people? Because I've been all over South Africa. Parliament has been all over South Africa. Yeah. You can go and find that in parliament yeah. where majority of people said expropriate land without compensation yeah. and do what this guy of mine did mm. in midval he didn't chase away the white man yeah he said you've got too much big the land and you are not using it yeah. all of it so take your portion i take my, my portion, portion then we use we the land share. but you can't do that if you don't own the land yeah so you first make the state the custodian of, of the, the land, land. You say, Every piece of land, it's including Malema's house, state. is owned by the state. Yeah. But we will know, yes, Malema's house, you yeah. can't tamper with it. Your property must include the building on top of the land. Yeah. Then, once that is being allocated, we know uh, there is uh, Alex Mall, there is this, th- this land is used for this. Then there is this idling land. Mm. What do you do with it? You give to the landless. Why should Alexander be the way it is when there is a, a big open land next to it? The other one is there by a uh, mall of Africa. Yeah. They even developed it that the family. Yeah. A, 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 it's, it's 99 year lease. Now. Waterfall. But that land is owned by f- one family. Yeah. And then the rich, the most clever blacks with money go there yeah. to buy properties that are leased for 99 mm-hmm. years. Yes. Mm. And they say we can't lease from the state. But they're yeah. prepared to list from one from family. One family. Yeah. So what? This is just hypocrisy. Yeah. That's why I said to you, they don't mean it. Mm. They don't own property. And the bad thing with that one of a uh, 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 waterfall is that when the lease finishes, yeah, your cr- children or great grandchildren they don't have a right to inherit that land. Once the lease finishes, they must still buy. They mm. must get enter into a new lease. Yeah. And buy. So we are suggesting what is being done in waterfall, waterfall already, already, yeah. but by a private company. Mm. The people who are saying to you, uh, "These people can't take our land," what, what? They are staying in flats, flats, and uh, they are given sectional title deeds that you own here, mm. but they don't own the land where they were prepared to buy apartments mm. and flats. Most of these people are staying in estates that are not owned by them, but they've got a problem with the state ownership. So it's not real. The obsession that our people are obsessed with the piece of paper called the title deed is not true. The most effective way, we give the land to the state, we allocate wherever is already allocated, you are there, don't move. Do you get a sense that South Africa is ready for that? It is. South Africa told you 
JJ, we did public hearings on expropriation of land yeah. without compensation. The ANC. That's why you nearly beat up uh, Teralagwada. He was telling me nothing. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to come here and meet Gwede because <laughs> he is going to talk nonsense and I'll answer him. <laughs> because I don't care about age, I care about wisdom. Yeah. You can be old and be stupid. There are old people without wisdom, a lot. Yeah. And there are young people with too much wisdom. And I want to link into getting. this thing about ANC and EFF mm -hmm. because it, it, it's relevant in the context of what you try to do on the land. You went to, to put a, then a, they say, a resolution. Then they no, expropriate the land yeah. without compensation, but it must be a rotten land. What do you do with a rotten land? They say this, you must expropriate the state-owned land. Yeah. It's already ours. How can we expropriate what is ours? Yeah. No, and they were I, pretending to be. Yeah, understand. But can and then they be? say the EFF sold out. Is that we were not going to vote for rotten land. Is that we want yeah. Santan City. So is that a deadlock in your view? Because I, I, I want to believe that should you come to a, a situation where you are on the table to try to negotiate some kind of a deal with the ANC, the land issue is going to be number one. Yes. Not not just because it's your thing as yes. the top of your agenda, but the yeah. end, that's why the ANC was founded. So, when, so it should be something that's common between the two of you. When I was in the ANC and Balega Mbete was a, a national chairperson, when she spoke about the land and how the economic commission at the CODESA yeah. sidelined the issue of the land, you, 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 you know, it feels like she wants to cry about it because she knows the originality of where this compromise mm. was made. So we will never miss each other with the ANC on the land question because the ANC went to Nazareth and said we must expropriate without compensation mm. but elected wrong leadership which who, who got did not scared, to pursue that who were scared that to resolution. pursue the resolution mm. unlike 1944 when the youth league was formed and took a resolution including uh, the program of action yeah. to revive the ANC and to radicalize the South African struggle the Youth League went to ANC 1949 conference and made the ANC to adopt its own resolutions and then did not end there and said we need correct people to come and lead this. That's when they elected the correct leadership. Yeah. Walter Sisulu was in that leadership. Uh, Nelson was in that leadership. Uh, uh, O.R. Tambo was in that leadership because they knew that we have got a progressive policy yeah. to take up arms against the murderous regime. Yeah. But these pastors will not implement arms. We need people who are going to take up arms. Do you think there is a hope between you and the ANC in terms of collaboration in the, on a bigger scale? I'm not talking municipal. We, we look, we are not far from the... We, we, we are not, we, what we are demanding yeah. is what was the original demand of 1912 when the revolution... Yeah. started in south africa so uh, we are demanding the fundamental cause of what made us to be where we are we are demanding that which was sold out at Kodesa. we are the original anc because our policy is exactly that these guys wanted the land and said the land must be returned to the right after owners. the break I want to talk to you about Ekuruleni and yeah. whether or not it's a good test case for such a collaboration. Just now, just last week, mm -hmm. the mayor was 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 taken out, and it it didn't look like that was a common agreement between what is supposed to be coalition partners as we speak now. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that after the break. It's frank dialogue on your radio uh, with uh, Julius Malema, who is the CIC of the EFF. Stay tuned for more conversation after the break. Frank Dialogues on your radio with Dr. J.J. Tabani. Let's talk frankly. Do you like what you hear on the station? If not, or if you have complaints about the program content of Alex FM, talk to us. Do you believe that Alex FM is not complying to its license conditions? You can inform us by writing to Alex FM within 60 days of the broadcast in which your complaint is based. You can post a complaint to number 89 Yaruna Building, corner 3rd and Watt Street, Weinberg 2090. That is number 89 Yaruna Building, corner 3rd and Watt Street, Weinberg 2090. Or you can email our programs manager 
Asia, king at alexfm.co.za. That's king at alexfm.co.za. Or simply phone us on 011-440-5419. That's 011-440-5419. If you're not satisfied with our answer, you can send your complaint to the Consumer Department of the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa. Their address is Private Bag X10, Highfelt Park, 0169. That's Private Bag X10, Highfelt Park, 0169. Or you can place a call on 012-568-3000. That's 012-568-3000. Or email them at consumer at ikasa.org.za. That's consumer at ikasa.org.za. You can also lodge a complaint on ikasa's website. The website is www.ikasa.org.za. That's www.ikasa.org.za. This message is brought to you by Alex FM. Elevate your mind. Frank Dialogue on your radio with Dr. J.J. Tabani. Let's talk frankly. It's Frank Dialogue on your radio with me, on Kubote, JJ Tabani. You can call us on 011-440-1396. I can see some of your WhatsApp calls as people who are uh, wanting you to comment on Nosy Viewer. <laughs> uh, uh, what, what is happening there, man? I mean, it looks like a big mess, hey? I mean, uh, no, but let's to talk call about Ikurulene. No, I'll come, come okay. to Ikurulene, but comment on this one of Nosy Viewer, man. It's a fresh issue. Well, uh, Nosy Viewer is just like all of them. Mm. If anything, if they, I wrote uh, a letter mm. uh, through the Secretary General mm. to National Director of Prosecution. Yeah. To prosecute Cyril, there was a case. There was an investigation on Busasa yeah. by a lead prosecutor mm. who went to make a presentation. No, during the presentation in one of the meetings of the NPA, mm. asked Financial Intelligence Center, mm. can you help me with this issue of uh, Busasa paying uh, Cyril's son money? Yeah. Uh, and when he was about to conclude his submission, Bato he said, "Stop it! Yeah, that is not for this kind of meeting. Yeah. We'll talk privately." And as a result, took the dog away. Yeah, uh, from this guy. And then Zondo, with all his weaknesses, mm. said Gwede must be prosecuted. Yes, and Gwede doesn't deny that he got he swallowed cameras. Mm. That's why he walks like that stomach full of stolen cameras of Busasa. Mm. Noam Vula used to eat chickens every month, every every end of the every year. Christmas. Mm. Yeah, every Christmas. You know wh wh whose chickens are those? Are chickens for prisoners. It's food for prisoners. Mm. So Busasa, you got a tender to cook for prisoners. Mm. And then in December, they buy more. Then the supplies get to be given to the ANC politicians. Mm. So Majority of those ANC leaders, especially those ones of the Women's League, because Bosasa is a Women's League company. Project, it's like that yeah. thing we were calling Lembede Investment mm. in the Youth League. That's what Bosasa is. Yeah. So, most of those leaders of the Women's League, for sure, chickens are crying in their stomachs because of how they were eaten from correctional service centers. Mm. Tabam Magueta says, after so many years, I'm still waiting for, for invoice. invoice. Mm. What a stupid lie is that? Then, all of these people, they, they say, prosecute them. Nothing. They are not prosecuted. If you Why, go, why do you think that's the case? Because it looks like Batoi is not living up to expectations. I've just had uh, Gwede Mandache here saying, part of what they, are, they were trying to do over the last five years was to strengthen independent institutions mm -hmm. so that those are the institutions that then would prosecute. Mm -hmm. So it's not expected of them to prosecute themselves. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that's in summary that's what you were saying. You know why Batoi was taken there? Batoi was taken there to go and squash the case of Van Lochenberg of SARS mm. of uh, that unit uh, they used to have at SARS. Mm. Remember? Uh, Van Lochenberg was already charged mm. and then the trial was running. In mm. the middle of the trial, Batoi gets appointed. The first thing she does, 
she drop charges in the middle once you are there it's no longer up to prosecution the judge must make a decision yeah. about that she was deployed there for that purpose and she has served the purpose and that was bravin's deployment so we, are you saying we must we must we must forget about a npa prosecuting any of these guys who's been fingered even by the state capture commission okay my brother you are a journalist and the good thing i like about you is that you are a professor of unisa you are in pretoria make time to go and talk to prosecutors in the npa mm. they will tell you how they've got so much evidence i don't know how to, this to prosecute yes i don't know how this one survived of no view mm. but by look of things you can see they have been trying by all means to squash it. Mm. The ANC Veterans League that tells us every day about corrupt people and how corrupt people must be removed. Today, they praise Nosy Viwe. For resigning. But she's got integrity and she embarrasses them. She says, no, I didn't just resign. There is this woman called... Pemima Jodina, yeah. who's pursuing me mm. and wanted me to be charged so that I can, I can, I can step aside. Mm. So you can hear that it was not about integrity. She was pushed out by Majodina's WhatsApp group. Yeah. So a lot of guys, a lot of guys will be prosecuted and they will be prosecuted successfully if Batoi was well, allowing well, the prosecutors yeah, to well do to, their well work. To be removed. So, yes. I can imagine the EFF government will have to have a new NPA head. Absolutely. And you need an independent mm. um, prosecuting authority. Yeah. You need independent judiciary. You need infrastructural development. Yeah. That's what grows the economy. It's not those things of whether the land is owned by the state or not. I had a friend, China owns yeah. its own land. I had a friend it's one of dialogue the with your countries. deputy in Durban yes. recently, and I asked him, is he irritated by a constant reference to the fact that the EFF may not be better when it comes to dealing with corruption when it does ascend, given the VBS, whatever you may say or, or not say about the VBS, etc. And, and, and that was just after the parliamentary committee, yeah. uh, ethics committee said to him, sorry, we are, we are dealing with you. And I said to him, but has the EFF dealt with you similarly? Can you just deal with that once and for all? I mean, would the EFF government be less corrupt mm. by, 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 by virtue just of being opposed to the current corrupt ones? The EFF government is not corrupt in a Gurulein. For so many months they've been mm. in power, you never arrested or accused any of them about any wrongdoing. Mm. The EFF government is not corrupt in Johannesburg. You've got MMC of uh, Public Safety and Health. Our MMC in Eteguin was removed for being in the forefront of service delivery. Mm. It was not corrupt. We've got two MMCs in Nelson Mandela Bay. Yeah. There's no corruption. The VBS was engineered yeah. to discredit the EFF. That's what I'm saying. There's always splitting of hairs. Yeah. To discredit the EFF by Praveen and them. And uh, uh, Terry. Terry is still to apologize. This will haunt him to his grave. He must come and confess that he was used by Praveen, the whole senior cancer. Mm to tarnish the good image of the EFF. Yeah. People are arrested, my brother. Why do you keep on hammering on this point? The EFF has been fighting Ramaphosa. Yeah. The EFF is fighting Zondo that he was not properly appointed. The EFF is fighting Batoi. The yeah. EFF is fighting Nozi Viwe. Yeah. These people are a problem. Mm. And we have this evidence and we are the state. Why are you not acting on them? There are people who, there's already a white man, a former CFO of VBS who's in jail. Mm. What stops these people from prosecuting Malema and Shibambo yeah. if they've got evidence that these people were engaged in wrongdoing? Yeah. I've got no power. I can't stop any prosecutor. I can't uh, dictate to any powers that be yeah. that you can't charge me or you can charge me. I've so your government before. will be intolerant of corruption. It is intolerant now. It will be in future, even internally in the EFF. Yeah. Look at how we run our affairs. We run them professionally. We pay our salaries. We bought a building at the city center in less than 10 years. Parties have been here for centuries. Yeah. They don't pay salaries. They don't own a property. 
How will you pay salaries? How will you own property? We even own a farm where we're going to build a school. Yeah, paid. tell me about that school, by the way. You're paid. Still, you have been talking on social media. You say, where's this school? You said people mustn't vote for you if your school is not there in five years. Just deal the, with that the, quickly the, for the me. The school is there. The farm has been bought. Yeah. The plans have been approved. Yeah. Material, no, the plans have been drawn. Yeah. Material is ready. There are professionals uh, uh, yeah. who are working So when will the school be ready? No, wait. Then that Mogali city. Yeah. Is not approving the plans. They say it's an agricultural land. <laughs> we have to now. <laughs> what do you call it? Rezone. Rezone, yeah. The thing. And then when we are about to rezone the thing, those Afrikaners there in Mahalisbeg yeah. are objecting yeah. uh, to the rezoning of agriculture. But you still insist it will happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. Because it's the powers that be which are blocking it. Yeah. It, it will happen. It's happening now. And remember, in that five years, We've got two years that were not functional of COVID. Mm. We are now three years in office, effectively. Mm. But still, we did all manner of things. There's nothing, there's no one who asked us for a school. We have no obligation to build a school. Mm. We chose to do that. Yeah. We took a decision to do it. Yeah. So why do you talk like it was in an EFF manifesto? It's not a manifesto. Yeah. It's a Congress resolution. It's an internal EFF yeah. and it's still issue. going to happen. It will happen. There's nothing that I yeah. said to you will happen and never come to pass. Except the, uh, the total shutdown of the grid. You did say it will be we shut down in two weeks. Well, you know <laughs> that these yeah. guys, when they were supposed to do what they were supposed to do, yeah. they were not doing it. When I said there will be a total shutdown of the grid, yeah. I was waking them up yeah. and they knew that this is real. We now have to intervene. That's why I told you that time. Yeah. These guys met with the CIA and CIA told them, if you don't do what you have to do, yeah. this thing is going to collapse. And once this thing collapses, we're out. So you think Ramakopa did a good job? I mean, it, 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 It's not him. That thing yeah. is their public relations. Ramakopa has got no capacity, none whatsoever, to do anything good. If you doubt, go and ask the residents of Swan. Mm. This DA is presiding over a rotten Swan, and mm. with action, they say we're blaming them. Mm. But they inherited it yeah. from Ramkhopa. So there's nothing. Ram Ramkhopa, it's a, it's a fashionista who, who thinks he dresses smart and wants to appear on TV. Uh, and and I don't know what else does he do. The guy messed up. Swani, Swani became the home of slay queens mm. under Ramukhupa and that guy who died was a speaker. Mm. If you go to the office of the speaker today in Swan and find the slay queens that are there, hired by these two, th th those people exist for for fame, for likes, for. For, for nice cities, they don't exist to change the lives of our people. That's why, yeah, is, is, it, going fair, is it fair though to, to judge his job as electricity minister uh, 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 against his failure at, 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 at Swani? I mean, no, I'm no, just talking I'm, about I'm now, judging his job now, yeah, he's earning a salary, but the lights are still off. The lights are off, what will unless EFF you are saying to me, uh, load shedding is a what result. E what will EFF do differently if we were to, to be in office tomorrow and you have to replace Ramokupa with? whoever it is that's mm -hmm. clever right mm -hmm. what will you do and how quickly well what we are going to do is to ensure that there is a a mixed energy energy source yeah maintain the existing coal power stations yeah make sure they are functional optimally mm. and get the best engineers to do the job yeah and ensure that those who don't do their job and are corrupt are removed from responsibilities yeah. that's the immediate thing you can do so you need to maintain the coal power stations yeah use them optimally and ensure that when you service this power station yeah you have generated enough megawatts yeah to can afford to shut this one down and be able to use the reserves that you have yeah by the time this maintenance finishes yeah if the megawatts are low you open this. Why other do you think they can't do that now? I mean, it's they, corruption. They, they've appointed a good CEO, I think. I mean, no, the, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very good guy. I yeah. know him. I grew up with that guy. Yeah. We're together mm. in the ANC. One of the most ethical people mm. that I think will do the job. Yeah. But he's surrounded by, he's surrounded yeah. by highness.
Sure. And uh, very soon they will destroy him. Uh, because that's what they do. A good, disciplined person doesn't get rewarded in the ANC government. Do, they reward do you think the that corrupt. they appointed him deliberately no, just before an election? No, 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 no. They had no option this time because there was an internal revolt even amongst them. Mm. You brought a white male incompetent mm. and therefore we're not going to overlook mm. the African who's competent, who's got the necessary mm. expertise to mm. be here. So their Pravin didn't have this way. Mm. And and they were prepared to revolt against that. Mm. So it was not because of their choice. Yeah. Uh, everybody was now saying enough is enough now. Yeah. So we need to use gas. Mm. We need to source gas. There are a lot of things that we should take over. So we need to switch over. Yeah. Uh, uh, for instance, why should they be cooking with the electricity uh, stove when there is e e efficient gas stoves? Mm. Mm. Uh, why should they be heating of water through electric Jesus? There are so many things we can switch into gas. Yeah. And save a lot of electricity. That's a policy and issue and, 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 and something that the, the public themselves can stay taking up. Um, uh, you know, for example, the issue about subsidy on solar. I mean, would, would, would EFF Absolutely. Just subsidize solar. That's to why I say people. to you, you need a mixed source of energy. Yeah. You cannot rely on one. You have to find solar. Uh, you have to find wind. You have to use uh, coal as your base. Yeah. You can't s shut down coal. You can't say to me, shut down this coal power station. That gives me 1,000 megawatts. And then there's no alternative clean, green energy. That gives me 1,000 megawatts. I'll never shut it down. And that money that Cyril went to take and said, we'll shut down our coal power stations. Yeah. You will see how he pays them. Because we will not shut down our electricity for a non-existing yeah, alternative. We need a full conversation about yes. about electricity on a different on a different dialogue. But mm -hmm. I've got limited time, and I want to sure. deal with a few more political issues. Mm -hmm. Let's quickly deal with coalitions. Yes. And you can use Ekurulene as an example. Yeah. Do you think do you have a hope that should the NC fall below fifty percent, that we can have a decent conversation that can result in a coalition government that can actually function? Do you know we had a functional government here in Johannesburg when the EFF uh, put a mayor called Herman Mashaba through <laughs> the DA? Yeah. It was working so well, mm. delivering so well. Mm. Mashaba was doing everything we said to him must do. Mm. Mashaba didn't know Elias Mutuali, the squad camp, was taken by the EFF there. Mm. Those toilets he provided was us. Mashaba didn't know Alexander. He stays here. He didn't know Alexander. He came, he was brought here. By the EFF to do cleanup campaign. Yeah. Yeah. So we and we were not in government. Yeah. We just said, guys, do this thing. Yeah. We're going to support you. How can a capitalist of note say we must insource uh, security guards? We insourced security guards here. Mm. Mashaba, if he was implementing a DA policy, yeah. in which DA policy was they insourcing of of cleaners and security guards? So we are not driven by ego. What makes the coalition to fail yeah. is not because people can't work together. Yeah. It's because the so-called bigger parties yeah. are driven by egos and want to dictate as if they won elections when they've not won elections. The first mm. thing you need to do when you don't get 50%, you must know anything is possible. Yeah. You know you're from Teflop. People used to lead SRC yeah. as president coming from SCO. Yeah. Or uh, some guy is popular, uh, he's an independent, he's coaching netball. Yeah. And from there he gets elected <laughs> as number one. And then Sasko just needs one vote. Yeah. There's a guy who became a president of SRC in Teflu yeah. called Bafan. Yeah. His popularity was netball. One vote. That guy said, no, I must be a president. Yeah. And we made him a president, but took everything. Because... The ANC and the DA can't differentiate between power and the glory. Mm. That's why the EFF was able to say in Ikurlin, well, put this mayor, we don't mind, we don't care. Yeah. But we need five MMCs. Why? We knew that's where the power is. Yeah. The mayor must cut ribbons. But whose ribbons, which, whose projects is the mayor going to cut ribbons for? It's our projects. We decide where this thing goes yeah so 
the ANC can't differentiate, and a lot of people can't mm. differentiate between power and the glory. I'm prepared to give the EFF vote to the ANC. Mm. Nationally, if he doesn't get, if he doesn't get yeah. fifty percent, you don't need the glory of being a deputy president. No, I don't need that. Yeah. Then I will uh, make one demand: make Floyd Shibambo Minister of, of Finance. Finance. Yeah. That's all. I think they are going to refuse that. Once we take that finance, because that's where the problem is, and the president Ramaphosa knows that. Yeah. The problem in this country is a department of finance mm. that is owned and controlled by Stellenbosch, mm. and which engages in anti-poor policies. Mm. You need a radical, and it is so disappointing that a guy like Maso, David Masondo, who, by the way, taught us these things that we are talking about, yeah. goes there, and the next thing is counted in dinners with the Rupets and them. Because we thought with the introduction of that guy, yeah. That thing is going to be radicalized. You don't think he can be, be the next the minister of finance if the NC was in total power? I, I will not support him. He can, they can decide. I don't care who they decide. It's their own thing. Yeah. But I'm saying to you, if I've got this power, yeah. that I can influence which decision. Yeah. I'm not obsessed with being president or deputy president. You know that conventions that are taking place. I can outsign a president yeah. if you make me a minister of sports, arts and culture. That's probably why they you will think I will be, I'm a president. That's probably the, what, the, why they're nervous. Don't you think so that the, they're the, not nervous. part of the conversations in the NC about coalescing with the EFF is more about personality that they can't stand yeah. to, 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 to imagine you as deputy president of a, of it, a country. It's, it's, you see, my, my problem yeah. and what is going to kill me mm. is a generational jealousy and envy mm. and not from anyone from the people i grew up with mm. from the people i supported they are the ones who are like no it's not going to happen yeah so i i don't care about generational jealousy yeah i can die and uh, five times and still wake up i will still find them where they are mm. that's what they are so I they said i killed the youth league right yeah but do you know that our youth league, difference of the ANC, not of the ANC Youth League, of the ANC, when we organize a youth league, 20 level in the history of the solution no, for the, this one to say go. not this one and why? Yeah. Yes. But I think that was a bit of an irritation because you, you did tweet that that was sort of distracting you from the work that was. Did I uh, speak there. about Naledi? You're making your own assumptions. Yeah. And then you want to put me. Yeah. In your own so you didn't interpretation. Talk about that. No, I didn't talk about it. <laughs> Tell me about, about I, I, I don't tell have me about a problem Carl, with Tell them. me about Carl Neos. A lot of people say this guy just arrived and he's already number twenty on the list. They them blame blame their own leaders. Remember we went to yeah. Mabida. After yeah. Mabida immediately we had a, a, a list. Yes. Carl Neos shocked me. Yeah. But not oh, only sh sh shocked, shocked by, me. By, by how he, he was he, too he, high. Yeah. Yeah. And uh uh Muzanel, mine yeah. was too high. And uh Busisi Kweban. Yeah. Too high. We have never so had, to, had intervene to do with, with we have never yeah. had to intervene yeah. with those people. For those people. So never. They, so you are saying they have their own constituency even within EFF that has propelled them to be where they are. Well the EFF believes that there must now be an element of professionalism. Yeah. In, it's kind of Amanda lead. Amanda. <laughs> there must be people who are professionals <laughs> who yeah. understand this thing and we have run some of the institutions before. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy has got a, 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 a Muzanel is Muzanel, going to fight hey, with he's going to kill you. Hey, <laughs> but yeah. I know him from a long time ago. That's why I'm using wrong names. Now. He's yeah. got his own experience. Absolutely. Carl Niels was Nelson Mandela's spokesperson. Only accused of having lied about his mother passing away. Yeah. And collecting money from people. A mistake he has accepted mm. and sincerely apologized. Mm. Why do you still want to kill him? Because he's a white man who must continue what apartheid did to him mm. for saying uh, you are an outcast. No. And for parliament, there is no restriction of when did you join. Yeah. No. For parliament, you can join today and go to parliament tomorrow. Yeah, I see that. But for the EFF structures, yeah. you cannot. So Mzwanele, Busisu uh, Mkwebani, Carl Niaus, and them. Yeah. Um, uh, in KZN we're going to conference now of the EFF in December yeah. they don't qualify to stand for the strike because what is important to us is to safeguard the organization called the EFF 
and be led by people that we know have been in the trenches with us yeah. for a particular a period. Once we secure the EFF, there's no nothing we can't secure because yeah. if you go to parliament and you are a wrong person with a secured, solid organization, we can recall you before. Uh, from parliament and there's nothing you can do we have yeah. recalled them before they thought they were powerful i'm told we've got one or two calls so let's, oh, sorry. let's see whether we can take one or two calls before we round off tonight good evening go for it good evening okay it doesn't look like we've got that any call eh? good evening Good evening. Oh, all right. It uh, looks like that that's, yeah. that's, that's not happening. The, let's talk about, as we round off the, 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 the question, the last constituency now, the LGBTQ plus community. You know, is, what, what's the EFF putting on the table for that community? Because it looks like they seem to be marginalized. They're not, they're not a big election issue, etc. No. Round, round off my conversation with that. The, uh, the LGBTQ plus community, <coughs> EFF is their home. Yeah. They know that. And uh, they know that the EFF has always advocated for their rights. Yeah. We were the only organization <coughs> that marched to Uganda to fight for LGBTQ plus communities' rights in Uganda. Yeah. <coughs> then we went to the e uh, UCT to have a, a, a lecture yeah. uh, with uh, Prof. Lumumba. Lumumba. And, and you are lambasted for that. Uh, and no, we're not, it, we're not lambasted. Yeah were not lambasted it was manufactured manufactured outcry <laughs> by that uh, uh, constitutional expect from uct yeah who did not organize any protest yeah against museveni yeah museveni who signed this into law yeah you are marching against the person who says i support this <laughs> but the person who enacted this is not the was, here, against, was yeah. here in south africa yeah and it nobody no marched much. against him yeah. only the eff which other president have you ever seen wearing the rainbow flag in all of these political parties except the president of the eff this is the home of everyone black yeah. white indian colored uh, and all forms of gender yeah they are more than welcome into this organization we don't judge people on the basis of their appearance we judge people on the basis of their ideological orientation and the support for the working class. That's yeah. all. A lot of people uh, uh, lambasting you for changing your views on Judge Trope, uh, uh, you know, four or five years down the line. Mm. Just deal with that once and for all. No, no, no. I didn't change any uh, views about Judge Trope. Yeah. I'm saying to you, yeah. I, I can disagree with you, my brother, yeah. too much. Me and you disagreed a Many lot. Times. Yeah. And we're not far apart now. Yeah. And then it doesn't make you a flip flopper. Yeah. You got exposed to certain things <laughs> and appreciation and you were like, Okay, but it looks like there can be something out of this yeah. people. So explain so, the one. So Trope yeah. was was treated unfairly, despite whatever I said about him. Yeah. He didn't deserve <laughs> that kind of punishment. Yeah. I, I disagreed with him, but you can't say a judge who says we're relying on you guys. Yeah. And you say that is an impeachable, impeachable yeah. offense. I did not disagree with Judge Trope for Judge Trope to die. Yeah. No, I'm going to disagree with a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, politically, uh, but wh when you unfairly treat them, yeah, I will never agree with that. I will defend your right, my brother, to disagree with me. Yeah. But I'm not going to allow someone to violate you. Yeah. Because I disagree with you. Absolutely, absolutely. Is there, is there a caller? I, 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 go, go ahead. Hello. Oh, good, good evening. Go ahead. What's your question? Uh, I don't have a question, rather to compliment the CIC. Uh, my name is Apele from KZN, a comrade, a fighter. I wanted to, com to compliment the CIC. Indeed, we are going to deliver you. And we are very happy to have a president like you. Thank you very much, guys. You have encouraged a lot. Continue to do a good job. And yeah, that's all I can say. Thank you. I, thank you very much. I think that will thank be a good, very much. good note to leave it on. So, yeah. you and buildings, you are marching in.
we have started marching to union building that day when we're celebrating 10 years anniversary yeah. of the eff yeah that's where it was made very clear yeah that this organization has grown so much and is prepared to lead uh, this country so you have kept me here for too long. I'm going to dinner of Tibo Taj. It's his birthday today. Oh, is that so? Do, do, yeah. do pass my greetings so to I him. So I was supposed to be there by <laughs> 7 o'clock. So. But thank you very much for yeah, your time. Thank I really you. appreciate no, no. it. All the best with the remaining thank time you. towards thank the 29th of May. Thank you. It's thank always you. nice to talk to you. Thank, thank you, you so much. That's the CIC of the EFF, Julius Malema, here on the Frank Dialogue on your radio. That was our election festival. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we hope that uh, uh, we will be able to do one more like this with the other leaders. Leaders, uh, of other political parties before the 29th. To give you a choice, uh, South Africa, uh, do you believe him? Do you believe uh, Gwede? Do you believe that the Tlabisa? It's up to you. You be the judge of it. Until we talk frankly again, may God bless you. Frank Dialogue on your radio with Dr. J.J. Tabani. Let's talk frankly. Come on now.